but that would be nice, especially if we're doing wrestling themes with, with Bob Fox, who mm. he texted me not an hour ago and said, um, I have a truly absurd basketball related fact to admit on the mixtape live show. Something I realized relating oh, to the last dance that I've had wrong my entire life. Oh, I, said, God. I said, stop right there. I don't want to be taking guesses because that could mean literally anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Jordan was the bald one. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> huh. And I'm just like, he was like, I thought baseball was the one with the bat. What, what is this? Yeah. Well, I thought he retired and went to the, uh, the 49ers, man. What happened? So yeah, that's Sunday. We're gonna uh, we're gonna get this. I mean, I who's to say how long it's gonna be? This could be so bad. He said, I think mm. both you and Tyler will be stunned and think I'm the dumbest human alive. So that again. Yeah, tune in or or don't. Uh, yeah, it Bob might be was, very depending on what he said. Bob was born like 1999, so all of Jordan's mm-hmm. basketballing happened before he was like an alive human that's being. That's the scary part. Is it like Jordan <laughs> played for the Bulls too? That's cool. <laughs> well, that's neat. Yeah, yeah, he only learned about Michael Jordan from Nate. So he's like, I thought yeah, that guy was. Like, yeah, no, I had on a Jordan onesie when he was in DC. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh. That's quite interesting. The this has been racking my brain for the past like four hours. Who do you think the coolest championship team of the last twenty years is? The coolest championship. Any sport? The four major. Like college. I feel like college is a little bit cheating because you can truly just go wherever. Mm. And yeah, like Miami, yeah. right? But Miami for a while, USC for a while. Like it, it moved. I feel like there's too many contenders. The coolest team. I don't know who you get. I'm thinking. I think the coolest champion. I think it's a, a very short list. Like it's already a short list because it's only uh, four to eighty champions to begin with, and a lot of those mm-hmm. are repeats uh, for mm-hmm. all of the sports. So it's sure. even less than that. But. It's about, it's about seven different champions, too. Yeah. Right. And I like, I don't think you can come from like a mate. Like, I don't think Boston's got any, any in the running, not for any not sport. Not <laughs> same with New York, same with LA. Like, I think there's too many people who hate those cities to make them cool. So I think mm-hmm. it's really down to two teams. And I think there's a third that is worthy of mentioning. I think three is the Eagles team that won. Okay, I think two is uh, the this Pistons, the 04 Pistons. Okay, and I think one is the two thousand three Florida Marlins. No, was it the first or second one they won? That's the second one, second and last. Who was on that team? Cabrera. That was a, a, a thirteen-year-old Miguel Cabrera. Yeah, man. The yeah, entire right. honestly, I was looking at the lineup and I was like, this team fucking rules. They got Pudge mm-hmm. behind the dish. They've got uh Mike Lowell, Alex Gonzalez, left side of the infield. They've got Luis Castillo, who I believe owns yeah. the second or third longest hit streak in MLB history. Probably. Uh they've got future 50-50 guy Derek Lee at first. And then okay. they have, they have two wands in the outfield, Tyler. 67% of their outfield is Wands, Encarnacion, and Pierre. Oh, I used to run base like that guy. <laughs> and then you've got uh, Dontro Willis. I mean, that's I don't think I need any more to be said. Uh, Josh Beckett. They beat the Yankees, which is yeah, extremely cool. And what was uh, their uniforms and hat? Fire. Fire. Mm. They they were also actively like their management they was not trying to win. Yeah. <laughs> they were not trying no. to win. <laughs> Listen, they've never tried to win. That's why when they start selling stuff, I was like, oh boy, Miami's gonna cut down the nets, huh? <laughs> Lowest payroll in the league, and they uh, they roll off another championship. That's how this works. 
They have never made the playoffs and not walked away without that hardware at the end. They're six and zero in the playoffs. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's them. I'm looking back. That Tampa Bay Bucks team was very cool. Derrick Brooks, Warren Sapp, Simeon Rice. It's a strong trio. Uh, Rondé Barber. Rondé Barber. The Seahawks, Marshawn alone. Yeah, good. They've they haven't aged well uh, on the coolness scale, but when they first popped off, I think yeah, they were very cool. Uh, Marshawn says, "Oh yeah, no, whoever's, Marshawn whoever's for sure. de- yeah, whoever's declined, he's more than picked up the slack." <laughs> Uh, yeah, they, they came and they thumped Peyton, like just thumped him. Yeah, put a woman on <laughs> something fierce. So I think they're for sure. Uh, Astros <laughs> and Astros are very cool, just blatantly mm-hmm. cheating. Uh, beloved, beloved by all. Yeah, it wasn't they were like, We cheated to win a championship. Uh, say something about it. Like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> You hit me with a pitch, okay. <laughs> Curse y'all. Let that keep you warm at night. Like if that's how y'all really want to play. Yeah, fine with us. Yeah, free we, base. Sure, <laughs> literally. Getting hit by a pitch is the freest base. The Nationals team for beating the Astros is pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like right now, in terms of personalities, like Soto, so young. Right now, he's extremely cool. Uh, in five years, I hope he still is. If there's even still sports, well, I mean, you think he's gonna have a take or something? Like you think he wants Soto just fires off a bad take? You never know. You just, <laughs> I mean, like Sherman when he first came up, it was just like, oh yeah, this guy's sick, and then he just like some guys you just get tired of too. Like Marshawn, no one's ever gotten tired of. I'm, I mean, are you tired of Sherman? I'm not tired of Sherman. I don't know. When he starts going at Revis, I find myself taking sides. Hey, listen, he <laughs> karma served that one. Karma handed that one. I'm not, yeah, I'm not tired of Richard Sherman. Percy Harvin, very cool. Percy Harvin, whooping, very cool. Whooping everyone's ass. Yeah. <laughs> Wherever he went. Mm-hmm. Coach and player like He's going to punch his way back into the league. He just, man, he's going to show up in Tampa Bay. They about to be a force, dude. <laughs> They're about to. Barry Sanders is like, you know, I've been keeping fit. Like, I, <laughs> like, I, I, I give you 10 carries a game. You know what I mean? Yeah, you time them right, and this could really work. I'm immediately the biggest Bucks fan. Chase number two. Yeah. <laughs> he's getting bumped down all over the place. Yeah, he's out of here. <laughs> I think the. The closest one of these Patriots teams could have got is 07. 19 and 0 plus Moss. Very cool. Didn't happen, but would have been. Nah. Cool. Yeah, they will never know, but uh, in theory. Like the Phillies team was pretty cool. Jimmy Rollins, Ryan Howard, Charlie Manuel. Yeah, you're a big CM guy. Love him. <laughs> I feel like that's a one Phillies fans love, and that's about it. Bruce Bochy, very cool. The biggest <laughs> head in the world. <laughs> like all, all he does is have a big head and win championships. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was a menace for a while there. It was like, odd year, Bochy. Yeah, Listen, it was every <laughs> other year, 10, 12, and 14. He was like, yeah, we'll have that. Oh, excuse me, even year, even year. Yeah, we'll run up a quick three, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and then disappear under the night. Oh yeah, I wear a nine and five A's fitted. <laughs> yeah, it is. Hey, <laughs> Bochy is known for one, having one of the largest cap sizes in Major League Baseball. With Houston, his nickname was Headley due to his onion. <laughs> that stinks. <laughs> Real bad. Uh, <laughs> Headley, uh, due to his unusually large head with a hat size measurement of eight and one eighth. Dear Lord. What a dome. You know, Bonds had to have skated past that during the, the early 2000s. Jesus. Our, 
I skated around it, maybe. <laughs> the one eighth. That's a whoop. That's a big ass hat. When he when he joined the Mets in 1982, they did not have a helmet that would fit him and had to <laughs> send for one send for the ones he was using in the minors. <laughs> yeah, you'd think a guy like that would send a warning, like travel with his own. Yeah, he was like, no, I don't. I thought everybody was uh, was supposed to just squeeze the circulation off of your head. It's like, no, Bruce, it's supposed to fit you, huh? <laughs> What do you know? This is my migraines have dissipated. Yeah, he just that's just like I'm gonna start winning championships. Yeah, that is a massive what a, head. What a tremendous noggin. <laughs> I'm just I'm just in awe of the lay. Now imagine like if, if Miles Garrett had his his head size and even a larger helmet for bonkings. Oh boy. No, I'd be uh It'd be better if it was Rudolph. We find out Rudolph's got the big head. Miles Garrett, like, I was just swinging in the wind, man. That, uh, <laughs> that enormous noggin. Uh, I feel like he does have a big one, at least proportionally to his body. Rudolph? Yeah. I think he's got a big face, a punchable he's face. Got, right. He's got that, like, senator face. Like, he might do some corruption and also cheat on his wife. Might. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, day to day. Again, Mike, uh, <laughs> feels like a, a, a given. I wonder one of those Rangers teams to win it. They were pretty cool. Uh, instead, Ron they lost Washington. in a heartbreaking fashion. <laughs> yeah, twice or no, twice. once was heartbreaking. Back, back to back. I can't one was, yeah, it was, a, it was uh, Giants and Cardinals. I feel like the Giants one couldn't have been like fun. Well, where did that series go? Yeah. It was four one. That's what I'm saying. That's bad. That yeah. ain't heartbreaking. You don't have a chance right. there. They right. lost in Game Seven to the Cardinals. Yeah, and it shouldn't have even. When you're losing to like David Freeze, uh, it's tough. I think Vlad dropped a ball. I was sick. No, not. Uh, it was Nelson Cruz. Didn't Nelson Cruz out in the right was trying to catch one, and uh, I want to say it would have ended the series. I can't believe yeah. that guy's still playing. That guy's like much better 10 years later. Huh? And walloping the ball, <laughs> crushing it. That's all like Nelson Cruz, Nelson Cruz. Hey, well, this is, he's been a DH for it has to be at least seven straight years now. Like he hasn't played the nah. And mostly because of this play, he, it was like hit to right field and he was mm. tracking it and he just had no idea where the wall was and like kind of jumped mm. and like alligator yeah. around it. And then it was I'm just sure. that was that. It wasn't like I'm trying to see. It wasn't like final out of the game, was it? Well, it was game six. I'm pretty I like, sure. No, I know. I know it was close. Let's see. He was linked to by performance enhancing drugs in 2013, huh? Sure was. Spent a 50 games shortly after. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a uh, very glossed over his Wikipedia. So good on him and his people. They just don't that mean. drop. Yeah, it's just like uh, they lost the cards in seven. Listen, I'll tell you where I will probably be able to find it. You probably some one Rangers fan <laughs> just put it up there to just yell at his computer for the Knicks. Yeah, it's a two-out triple in the ninth <laughs> to oh. tie the game. <laughs> what, ge what game was this? I know it's late in the series. Oh yeah, I remember this. Yeah, like this is <laughs> this is tough. That's what my dude be bumbling around in uh, the show. <laughs> a butcher, <laughs> just a butcher out there. Yeah. Concussion boy. Uh yeah. Is that Neftali Feliz? He can't believe it. Oh, in St. Louis. Oh. oh, I know they're yelling all kinds of bad stuff at him in the outfield. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> Ryan's like, no, beat that no, guy yeah, I'm in a headlock. <laughs> Did two out triple on the ninth. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so who hit this? Freeze, uh, yeah, David Freeze. It'll be, yeah, it'll be on his page. Let's see what game it was in. He's got it, he's got it. He feels that dirt. He's like, he, oh, he's boy. tracking it. Mm. Yeah, the second he feels that dirt on his cleats, he's like, get, get a little nervous. Yeah. Yeah, LaRusso's like money in the bank. 
<laughs> Pujols can't believe it. That, imagine that's how you win a championship. That's rough, dude. Oh, here we go. Yeah, in game six of the 2011 World Series. <laughs> with, the Rangers, uh, with the Rangers leading the game seven to five, two-run lead, and leading the series by three games to two, Freeze came to bet in the bottom of the ninth with two out. Yeah, oh. so it literally would have won it literally the would World have won Series. World. No. Oh, <laughs> uh, I... With a count of one ball and two strikes, literally down to their last pit. <laughs> oh, that! <laughs> I'm sick for Nelson. Cruz. Let that man do steroids, bro. <laughs> like, oh, that, yeah. Wants, yeah. <laughs> uh, like that's why isn't? I mean, not that I want to put this heat on him, but why isn't that like Buckner level? No, it absolutely should. I think oh, people uh, just learn. Yeah. You know, because it's almost yeah. the exact exact same thing, like to the T. It was both game six, both would have won the World Series. And both and, pushed to seven where the other team won in seven. Yeah, prevailed, yeah. That's why I don't think I re- – that's why it's – And the Rangers have I a mean, crazy drought too, don't they? I don't think they've ever won a championship. That's what I mean. Yeah, I would the consider Rangers. that. I don't think they're that old of a franchise, but, yeah, I don't think they ever – if I'm not mistaken, I can't think of all these Rangers dynasty. No, none. Yeah, when did they start? Does it say? I know they're not that old. That is uh, ugly. 1961. Okay. Yeah. With a count of one ball and two strikes, Freeze hit a two run triple <laughs> off Neftali for Lee's just out of the reach of Nelson Cruz to tie the game and send it to extra innings. In the 11th inning, again with two strikes, Freeze hit a game-winning leadoff walk-off solo home run to deep center field. 420 hey, feet. Smoked it. <laughs> yeah, he did. We had that? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> to send the World Series to his first Game 7 since 2002. He joined Freeze joined Jim Edmonds, the man who he's traded for, as the only players in Cardinals history to hit an extra inning walk-off home run in the postseason. He joined Aaron Boone, David Ortiz, Carlton Fisk, and Kirby Puckett as the only players that hit an extra inning walk-off home run when their team was facing postseason elimination. In Game 7 of the World Series, Freeze hit a two-run double in the bottom mm-hmm. of the first inning, bringing his 2011 postseason RBI total to 21 in an MLB record. Cardinals yeah, he was just- you're talking and about the skin, skin the ball? Could not miss. Oh, my God. <laughs> for his effort, yeah, he freeze a world champion for the first time. For his effort, he was named World Series MVP. He became the sixth player to win LCS and World Series MVP in the same year. He also won yeah. the Babe Ruth Award as postseason MVP. Yeah, it's hard to win both just since they're both, like, back-to-back series. Like, yeah, that guy yep. was hot then. This guy is hot now. Well, the first uh, one's for two rounds, right? It's a, it's just like postseason. I always, right? so I didn't. Is it? I, I thought it was. It's like I it's just it was, postseason in, in the World Series. Like it's not the NLDS MVP. It's just the postseason MVP, and then World Series and or World Series MVP. No, it's a championship I league series MVP. Is the show yeah, is but, lying to me? Yeah, it's a show. <laughs> I bet they can't say the word World Series or some shit. It's like yeah, no, the after games uh, MVP. Right. Yeah. It's it's CS. I'm sure if, if you're like tearing the cover off the ball for both, it yeah. doesn't get held against you. I was gonna say, listen, I don't think it would have mattered for freeze, dude. No, he was seeing the ball extremely well that October. Oh, I was, I was, <laughs> see it. I was sick too because fuck the Cardinals. <laughs> yeah, no, heartbreaking, yeah. like that all time loss, all time. That, and again, so Nelson for like, you know, he's had some all-star years since then, and I'm glad it didn't turn into a Buckner situation. Because I know right. it like, really affected that guy's like personal life. Big uh, time. But, I, yeah, I don't think I realized it was. <laughs> that catastrophic. Like, that, like, the second that fly ball was hit, Feliz was like, like, everybody on the Rangers but Nelson Cruz was like, this might be the one. <laughs> like this is like this is when you cut to every single person's reaction. And Nelson Cruz was like, uh oh. 
He's like, yeah, you couldn't hit it to left, bud. You just couldn't oh, hit it anywhere yeah. else. Yeah. Like, listen, he's like, I couldn't have took two steps back before the uh, uh, ball was hit. This couldn't have been the 19 other fly balls I handled in the postseason that came right to, like, that I had to handle with ease. Yeah, no, it couldn't have been. That thing was a slicer away from him uh, in, like, the biggest moment imaginable. Oh, he did, uh, a gold glove right fielder might have caught that off the wall. Like, might have played it off the wall. Right, yeah, it wasn't an easy play, but it was super <laughs> catchable. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Nelson disagreed. <laughs> he sure did. Oh yeah, I forgot Rashid lost the headband in this game. He was like, I'm 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 cooking that much. I don't even care. Yeah, I'm out of here. He's like, bro, you have Luke Luke Walton on me. I remember Vlad having like a bad, like not that bad, of course, but like butchering a ball no. in the field. And it was one of those like he probably should have just been like he was DH and that they were playing like the NL side. And it's like, oh right. Just, just don't hit it to Vlad. <laughs> Yeah, Nelson Cruz. Ooh. It was a tough one. <laughs> yeah, let's not. Yeah, let that man use steroids. Oh, has he won a championship since? I hope he get him a championship. He sure hasn't. Yeah, I hope he get him a championship. Well, he played in, uh, for your Mariners for a long time, where he was still mashing despite that park being built for anything. But sure, sure. Uh, Shaq and Kobe can't believe it. Um, Nelson Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that was oh not what year was it? Uh, eleven. Eleven. Yeah, no, he's one, two, three, four. Made five All Star teams since then. Oh yeah, he's been those three top four top ten in MVP. He's got a, a All MLB first team on his roster. I love to see that. A AL MVP. He's got career home runs. Oh yeah, there was uh, a. There was a stretch here. Like he, I'm pretty sure he signed a one-year de- deal in Baltimore, and mm-hmm. promptly led the league in home runs. <laughs> and then, yeah, he just the Mariners picked him up. He was there for five years. He he hit less than 40 home runs once. Excuse me, twice. Uh, just tearing the cover out, led the league in RBI. And then, yeah, last year in Minnesota, hit a, a smooth 41. I hope he gets a championship. That's one of the, that motivated me to get back on the show, man. I can't. I ain't had no shit that bad, man. Very few lost, humans have. We lost four to one, man. I now I'd prefer it that way. Let me go and get my ass whooped. We ain't had no hope of winning this series. <laughs> Poor Nelson Cruz. <laughs> Uh, I hadn't watched that in a while. That is one of like, would you call that like an all time choke? No, because he didn't even, like get a glove yeah. on it, right? That's what I'm saying. If it was like, yeah, no, he's under it and he just dropped it. Yeah, that's where it's like, oh boy. No, he like Nelson in all his glory, like was never known as a slick fielder. Uh, no, so man, oh man, I got it. No, Ron Washington being a slightly more attentive manager, maybe he gets a defensive replacement out there. <laughs> uh, but again, who was on it? He might have been the defensive replacement. No, he sure was. <laughs> Other option was Vladimir Guerrero, a 42 year old Vladimir Guerrero. Let's see, that uh, was 2011. Or Nolan Ryan. Those were the two options who could go out there and play some right. I mean, they had David Murphy, of course. Okay. Oh, that yeah, they had Julio Bourbon. He, they absolutely could have tossed him. They had Leonis Martin. And you could have said literally any name. It would have <laughs> no disrespect to the the nail man, but yeah, Bourbon and Martin certainly could have. And I get they were both twenty five and younger, but they certainly would have caught that ball. Yeah, like I'm looking now for it. Someone's going to tweet me. It's like, well, Bourbon was in center and Martin was in left. Well, what now, dum dum? <laughs> right. I'm like, well, still should have caught it. I don't care. Even then, yeah, you put your worst guy in left, not right, because shit like that. Right. Yeah. It, it switches from Little League mentality. Little League, you put your worst guy in right because no one's pushing the ball. Right. Yeah. But yeah, yeah Major but- League Baseball, yeah, you can't be putting your Nelson Cruz because Hamilton uh, can field. 
dude, defensively for his career. <laughs> Offensively, oh, yeah, his war, 39.6, pretty good, right? Oh, yeah. Defensively, minus 11.6. So, nah, that's good. He still made $99 million for his career, so he's... Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, he's fine, but I, I, I'd still like it if old Nelly got a, uh, got a ring. Because <laughs> that's really tough, man. And I think Real Beltray is on both those teams. Beltray doesn't have a ring, does he? I like he always so. like just. I feel like he always just misses teams, or they get close. I don't think he does. He should have just if the fucking Red Sox handled things better, he just would have been there. Well, listen, if we know anything about the way they handle their stars, I think we can put the blame here on uh, Adrian. Yeah, no, he was in Boston for one year, twenty ten. They got rid of him so that they could bring move, break Kevin Euclid by putting him back at third and getting uh, Adrian Gonzalez for first. Not not the worst move that's ever happened, but I wasn't a fan of getting rid of uh, Beltre, whose swing was tailor made for Fenway Park. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a Hall of Famer, right? I uh, yeah, yeah. I'm looking like it's only quote unquote only before All Stars, but he's got three thousand hits. I didn't realize he was oh, yeah. that close to five hundred home runs, four seventy seven. Oh yeah, five gold club. I thought he had more than that, honestly, but yeah, he's got 3166 hits. But four out of four All Stars feels crazy low. I feel like he was really just a long time. But All Star well, games are weird. The Dodgers thing, I'd have to remember who was like he. He took a huge jump in 04 mm. uh, from home runs, like nearly doubled his career high. And then he that was his free agency. Uh, I, I got it, yeah. yeah, that was his free agency year. Then he went to Seattle again. Like I just said, you can't hit home runs there. His numbers died. And so he was kind 48 of 48 to 19. Jesus. Yeah, and he was he was he won two gold gloves out there, but it was just like, oh yeah, that was clearly uh one of those uh contract years. And then Boston picked him up on super cheap. And it was just for like a one year, like prove it deal. And then he fucking came top 10 MVP, all-star, silver slugger. Somehow not a gold glove. That doesn't make any fucking so he sense. proved it is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Big time proved it. And then he promptly signed with the Rangers. 21-year career. Good grief. Baseball is dope. How much did he make? So I know that Seattle contract was like 219 mil. I was going to guess. I was like not a dime less than 175. If you play 21 years, that's legit like three big contracts. Like your rookie shit and then like three after that. Maybe one, unless you get like one 15 year. Yeah, from 05 to 18, he didn't make less, uh, except for the Red Sox year. Uh, he didn't make less than 11. And even that Red Sox year, he made nine. But that's fucking baseball. They're like he does that and he's just available. And it's just like, yeah, one year with the Red Sox. Prove you still got it, good guy who's 31. Right. And he's like, no, I've still very much got it for several more years, in fact. That's what I mean. And he hit 49 doubles and 28 home runs that year and batted 321. <laughs> like, hey, I, Euclid, you couldn't – I get it was an impossible situation to getting – like, Euclid, I'm pretty sure, was top three in MVP that year. Let me see. Baseball wild like that too. Be like, who won? Like, why didn't Bonds win the MVP? That year? Andy Van Slyke, man, it was a year he just went crazy. No, so he he went top three and then top six in MVP the two years prior. Then they moved him to first pretty much full time when they got Beltre, and his body was like, all right, this is cool, I can accept this. And then they got Beltre, they were like, you're going back to third, and his body was like, ah, oh, boy. Get back to the hot corner, you go. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, his production never came back ever. Interesting. But he was like, that's one of those fan favorites. It's like, yeah, we got to keep this guy. Adrian Gonzalez was a monster at that point. But you could have just had two Adrians at both corners and been set. Mm. Let's see. Hall of Fame statistics. Black ink. He has a nine. I don't know what that means. But the average I've never understood 20, what that means. As a 27, so that's not a good sign. Great ink. 
He has 98. The average Hall of Famer has 144. Another bad sign. Hall of Fame monitor, 163. Likely Hall of Famer, 100. So that's a good sign. Hall of Fame standards, 55. And the average Hall of Famer is 50. Jaws. See, I, I do like the concept of like peak war. I wish that right. would go to other sports. Like, uh, it's not enough to say Jordan had six first all NBA teams in a row. It's like yeah, his peak war was like that much better than anybody else's peak war. I got, that's the, the one number I wish would leave baseball and go to another sport. That Just that one. Smart. You're going to want doubles in the NBA. That would make things very hard. Uh, but the, yeah. McCollum oh, got nine triples. What the hell does that mean? His career war, his seven year peak war are all healthily above the average Hall of Famer. The 15 third baseman in the history of the game who have made the Hall of Fame. I don't know, man. Didn't win that chip, though. He didn't. It's also funny, like every it's got like the most similar by ages, and every single person by age is in the Hall of Fame. Every single one compared to him by age is in the Hall of Fame, except ages twenty to twenty-two is Manny Machado. Yeah, the Hall of Fame. Certainly tra- every, uh, tracking that way. Yeah, every other similar batter is also in the Hall of Fame. So it feels, despite black and gray inks, uh, disagreement. He's just about to fight Miguel Cabrera. I mean, why would he? Yeah, he didn't like that. He said he gave me my butt. He just pulls a 22 from me. <laughs> yeah, Mac 11. Yeah, just <laughs> blows the pitcher off the mound. <laughs> oh, boy. We got a little tomfoolery on the base path. <laughs> <It's run home. laughs> yeah. Umpire's just like I- I'll allow this for some yeah. reason. <laughs> yeah, Beltra. He had to have seen someone growing up just like barely get hit on the head and die because I can't understand for the life of me why he's so afraid of people touching his head. I think you got the you got the good hair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, He's foul. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, what uh, a stiff breeze. This... <laughs> Maybe he had the wire where they fed him curveballs in his head. Mm, now we're talking. Oh boy, <laughs> that one actually worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like baseball doesn't have characters anymore. No. No, it lost him and Ichiro like the same day. It was tough. Yeah, well, Ichiro's not a character. He's a stinker. <laughs> the Dennis Rodman of baseball, I've yeah. often said. <laughs> he tried to catch that between his legs? Yeah, he tried to like yeah. mid-stride. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nobody has fun like this in uh, football. Like, <laughs> no, they sure don't. <laughs> like, you mo- I set down the ball, you move it, we might get into a blood fight. Like, yeah. for spot the ball. 37 or 36, I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, our, our wives in the stands may get into an all out uh, blow up. Yeah, was like, I got it. He just picks the ball up like a like a major league co- or like a minor league coach just nails it into the stand. Yeah. Hey, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I realized he had this many uh, highlights. Oh yeah, uh, Beltre, like v- beloved, <laughs> beloved. I get it because everything he's doing. Like he's not tanking the team. He's like, I was already boned. Let's right. have a little fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to this only, I, I would definitely just suggest you go to YouTube. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got to, I'm writing down the time. I'm gonna start trying to clip audio stuff so people can see some <laughs> of our video. Yeah, he's just like, eh. <laughs> 
You guys even talk at second base anymore? Uh, yeah, you, I see a decent amount of it. I mean, first is the ultimate chatting base because there's mm. always a guy just standing there covering it. <laughs> he moves the bat on deck circle so he can stand there. <laughs> um, you look up and he's up for some reason on a, a bicycle uh, <laughs> <laughs> going into second base. <laughs> Where did Andrew Beltre get a bike? He's round his second. He's <laughs> got uh, Elvis Andrews on the pegs. <laughs> I'm cracking up, man. It's yeah, your best. I, my favorite play. I swiped a wild pitch. He threw his arms up like, wait a minute. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> Hugged it out with Freddie Hernandez, the legend. Yeah, I, I feel like, too, like he's got a perfect just baseball name. Eight, oh, yeah. <laughs> Threw his glove at a ball. <laughs> well, I missed it. I was looking at his baseball. Oh, yeah, hold on. He's, he, uh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> they had the shift. Did you see it? Yeah. <laughs> they don't they like the, that, yeah. No, you know, Robinson and I was about to catch a, a to the moon, Alice. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, even Steve is as fair as it comes. Oh, there was there was an eleven minute one. That was only uh, five and a half. No, I really had no idea. Yeah, does anybody do this stuff now in baseball? If so, let me know. I would watch for this. Anybody doing this now? That Soto's Soto says <laughs> like a little bit, like he's having fun out there, but not to the Beltray level. He's also like 20 years old, so Jesus Christ. Yeah. He was a big time one knee guy. <laughs> yeah, ball so so hard you lose your balance. Like you put all your balance into hitting that ball. He just does a forward uh, barrel roll. It's <laughs> threatening the umpire's family. <laughs> Where's he? he Dominican guy? Has to be. I can't wear it like this. Adrian, come on. Adrian, we've, we've went over this 10 times. <laughs> I have a little fun, Jerry. Yeah, he's DR. Yeah, Dominican, yeah. That's so much better than when Albert Bell would like clothesline the second. <laughs> like, we have to watch that next. Like Albert, you catch Albert Bell in a rundown. You, man, he going through your sternum. <laughs> He's like, I was fucking I like this. <laughs> like this? Yeah, like this. <laughs> so you need a veteran to show the young guys those kind of those kind of moves. <laughs> Freddie Hernandez have some sort of love hate relationship with each other. I'm sure they're either the best of friends or sworn enemies. <laughs> when they're not together. Yeah. And it's the DI versus Curacao. Is that where Felix is from? Venezuela. It's, it's one of them. Hit him in his thigh meat. Yeah, Venezuela. Venezuela. Yeah. Some uh, blood for you. <laughs> I gotta say, Rangers hats with their warm ups a great look. The red hat very with the strong. blue warm up, very good look. Very strong. Jesus. Another one. I might have to switch my hitting stance to Adrian Beltre on uh <laughs> I want to hit some knee dingers. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> I, I literally cannot stand. I have to put all my might in destroying your piece of shit pitch. They're gonna get him good. No, I thought they were going to touch his head. They did. He, he must not have felt it. Just chewing some gum. <laughs> Me and the fellas. <laughs> He's a man's up on third, did he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, just something... run, he, just, he just runs straight to third, and the ref is like, ah, there's no rule against that. They're like, what? <laughs> All the time, there's been no rule against that. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> I'm out of here, guys. Guys, it's the top of the ninth. We're up. I gotta, you know what I'm saying? My car is running in valet. 
manager, uh, Beltre. Pitching coach, Adrian Beltre. Yeah, and you call a timeout. Yeah, <laughs> Hey, you. Yeah. A routine grounder to right. Yeah, something must happen. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Overextended <laughs> himself. I was going to say how, but listen. Whiskers on the uh, Mariner. They hate it about him. They say it in the newspaper. <laughs> His only flaw. So many run down. <laughs> Guys constantly trying to take second on a, on a seeing eye single. Oh, oh boy. Woo! That's another one of them hanging curveballs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see you uh, later, fuck face. <laughs> he, he like didn't even move his leg. Like he didn't step into that. He didn't. No. Hey, man, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, this is as he's approaching three thousand hits. He hit that. Uh. -huh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I would just love somebody teach him. like, listen, if you step into your you know, ball of goal out farther, it's like interesting. Yeah, I'm not here for it. Yeah, he comes back, hits another 200 on grass. He's like, what if I sat down? They're like, probably a bad idea. Like, I'm going to try it anyways. It's 338. Yeah, they're like, well, how? How did he do that? <laughs> He's just high five, just breaking hands. It's not going to be a, a, a five unhot by Adrian Bill. <laughs> the highest fives. <laughs> Just pushing a guy off a base. Just having a little fun with it. Yeah, where's the wire? Show it to me. <laughs> he punches Jose Altuve in the face. <laughs> He's like, you're tiny. I can do that. <laughs> then I'm going to touch your head. You ever touch mine, I'll break your femur. Uh, yeah, it goes good to go between the legs yeah, yeah. for some reason. Oh, he's booking it. Knees to chest. <laughs> <laughs> this is very funny. Yeah, they're playing a hot potato on the base between the tag and uh, <laughs> Bill Trey's hands after the double. Yeah, and the ump's just letting it go. <laughs> But like, am I, can I stand up? Shit. Well, I'm just like right there. Like, if he fucks this up, <laughs> I'm running him up so fast. <laughs> he's, he's got it locked up, ready to just scream yeah. him up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime somebody got the hand on the chin, you know they're looking for some trouble. He just runs home, leaves his car. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a a <laughs> Yeah, he, he like really swings and cuts a guy in two. He's just that strong. <laughs> he's going to shower anyways, and he's like, don't you fucking dare give me this Gatorade bath. Yeah, it's for the hair, man. He's like, listen, if y'all can hit me mm. from the neck down, go crazy. He's like, I pay $100 a lot. Some say he still carries it right. <laughs> Is that Odor? Famously uh, punched Jose Batista in the face. Rugnit? Yeah, the very same. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, you're kidding me. Yeah, like this is, this is what baseball is about, having that one teammate like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, as you were saying. <laughs> yeah, as I, I stand on my shield, my sword and shield. <laughs> You're like, you tell me if those big bullies are coming after me again. <laughs> They're right behind me, aren't they? <laughs> they just jump and beat him up. Yeah, I don't know if you can. I think that's part of the problem. <laughs> yeah, how big is he? Like, I know he's stout, but I think he's like he's six, five, five, eleven, two twenty. So yeah. yeah. I wouldn't mess with Adrian, but you see how far he's hitting these balls off one foot? Oh, shit, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> he punched right through your body. Look at fast foot. <laughs> the Angels on the way through. The Angels had no fun in 12 years. <laughs> they had those rally monkeys, and then that was that. They were like, we've got enough fun yeah, for centuries. Andrew Simmons, yeah, Simmons was like, what is this dude? <laughs> he just hit <laughs> the brakes. <laughs> he plays baseball like I imagine Fred Flintstone would. 
Yeah. <laughs> like you can hear the sound effects. <laughs> the coconuts, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like there we go. <laughs> he smokes smokes what looks to be a clear double round in first. No <laughs> <way>. <laughs> 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 Nearly out at first. Off a ball that it just crushed. <laughs> you hit it too hard. I gotta say, there's some uh Acuna is like I want to be like that guy. Without well, if Acuna could, I'd uh, love him even more. You can toss for this, <laughs> probably. He goes out there and just rubs the umpire's shoulders. <laughs> yeah, get in the batter's box. He was like, I just need to be in that circle. Yeah, got it. <laughs> they left. <laughs> hey, you're showing me up, boy. Ah, Boom. yeah, Come on. on. That's week 12. Yeah, that's like when Tim Duncan got tossed for smiling too hard. Yeah. That's He's like, Come on, you know me. Yeah, that, that's like Tom and Jerry. You pull the hole over to where you want the guy to fall down. <laughs> Adrian, Beltran, yeah, Adrian Beltran is just a cartoon character. Correct. He's also a, a four to a player, but. Uh, <laughs> No, just, the just, fifth I'm being getting... comedic uh, timing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is one of those guys like, man, oh, man, it's a 162-game season. Uh, it's game 78, but I wonder what the hell Adrian is going to do today. <laughs> like, that's what will keep us all together in this long season. <laughs> well, that's he the thing, throws. too, because – because it could either be like he hits a ball 700 feet off one knee or he pulls some hilarious antics, like either way. That's what I'm saying. So it's like whatever it takes to get through 162 games. Like he just threw his javelin through Freddie uh, Gonzalez. But threw his baseball bat like a javelin. Freddie Gonzalez is dead. <laughs> so like he loves some Adrian. Bam. Yeah, you saw that one coming, man. <laughs> I don't think there's anything. Obviously, all sports are unique. That's why we watch them because of the differentiation. But I don't, I don't even know what would compare to just a no doubter. The second you see it leave a pitcher's hand, and then the guy connects, and you're just like, yeah, that was very enjoyable. I can't imagine what that felt like off the barrel. <laughs> you. That's I think it's honest to God. It's why everybody loves the show because even in a video, like there's just no feeling like like right. dunking on somebody, hitting a fadeaway three, eighty yard touchdown run. It's cool, but it ain't the same as like you hit it and just drop the bat. <laughs> oh boy, you talk about Albert Bay to smoke the ball, dude. Oh, I know his slugging percentage. Hey, <laughs> hey come on, man. There's no need for that. That was 90s basketball, Jeff Van Gundy. What do you want from him? Like, what team is this? Not, I'll say this. Not a single one of my man's teammates wanted it. Uh, wanted it was it Fernando Vina? It is A. Vina. Knocked his head askew. <laughs> That's definitely Fernando. It's got to be. I know they go to you. That's true. These Brewers jerseys are just so bad. That could have been anyone. Yeah. Blammo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it? Was it Fernando? V? I just want a height and weight reference. Uh, Looks about five six. Like one one fifty. Vina, we've got a, a five nine, a stocky one seventy. Let's see what they have. Albert Bell listed as substantially larger. <laughs> Albert Bell is. But it's playing six one one ninety, but that's one of those like Barry Bonds playing cards is one eighty. Right. This twenty five. There we go. That's the Albert Bell I know. Albert, you talk about a guy that could absolutely crank. Yeah, give me some Albert Bell uh, dingers. Is that Cleveland team? Watch a whole inning. <laughs> Why not? A couple off pitches. I love Armando Benitez as much as the next guy. Kenny Lofton, extremely cool. 
That's man. If they won even one title, things would be so different. They Carlos they got Rayer. as close as you can several times. Like they, uh, were the, they, were, they were the they were the Braves. Got as close as you could. <laughs> the, Davey Johnson. Well, wow. Nelson Cruz. He was just minding his own business, playing some top golf, and we brought that back up into the world. Yeah. He's like, what the hell? My son put me onto this show. He's a part of my take fam. That's how we found you guys. Now this. Kablamo. Yeah, I, this whole stance, I forgot how wacky his stance is. Hey, he's got, it, like, nothing really makes sense. He's got a terrible <laughs> like, yeah, it's like every Every single bit of his weight is in his belly. He keeps it all back. <laughs> it took the last second and he transferred it all to the baseball. Like, that's just a, it's one like I'm sure a coach was like this. Like I should be breaking down your swing, but he's hit 460s in straight. Like, I, I, I. These are the highlights. Well, this is uh, uh, AL what CS Grand Slam. Yeah, I, now you know, I gotta say, Bell eight. Yes, that's pretty strong. I used to, I feel like he's too big to wear a single digit. I, think that's, I feel like that's why it works. It's like I, I'm seeing a defensive lineman with seven. Right. You put like a smooth, like a 28 on him? Now that would sing. Nah, he's a 50 guy. <laughs> he's a big, big number. Yeah, he is trying to put this ball somewhere bad. What's that Arma- pitcher's name? I'm Armando on. Benitez. Benitez. Benitez, yeah. Who just uh, threw a blistering 72 mile per hour pitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bell, I can't believe I didn't send that ball into the sun. <laughs> it's like, throw it faster, coward. Um, oh, he's an LSU guy, like from Shreveport. You know? Yeah. That make him Benitez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Good eye. You can just take like when he gets a hole, he's gonna do something really bad to this baseball. Without question, there's a game I think I'm gonna throw on for the the rest of this episode just because the first three innings is chaos in terms of just dinger after dinger. Okay, Kenny Lofton on third. Oh, I remember them shoes. Oh yeah. Oh boy. This is one two. This is one two count, but it's picked up nineteen of this at bat. <laughs> Those Orioles jackets are fire too. Oh yeah, the Orioles. I feel like the Orioles do black and orange better than anyone. Yeah, shitting on the Bengals. Bengals, Giants. I feel like don't do enough with it. I don't hate the Giants. I like the gray and then the black. Oh. 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 <laughs> Yeah, like the moment he hit it, he's like, that's the pitch I've been waiting seven pitches for. Like, I knew it was coming. I just had to bide my time. Look at Jacob's field. Very, very strong field. Vizcaino. Oh, yeah, I wear that jacket tomorrow. <laughs> Sitting on your couch. Dude, Albert Belt in a different lifetime is probably just, I'm willing to bet he played some sort of football, dude. And somebody was just like, no, listen, no question. Like, yeah, play baseball. Trust me. He's like, like no, I'm outside linebacker, Skip. He's like, listen, play outside fielder, my guy. That place is rocking. Oh, yeah, the, the Jake? Oh, are you kidding me? Great nickname for a stadium. That logo is so fired, that I, even with how problematic it is. Oh, yeah. He's got a good curl in his head, too. He just not here. He just lost the game, you know. <laughs> yeah, Everyone else who did nothing is going crazy. <laughs> He's one of six players in Major League Baseball history to have nine consecutive 100 RBI seasons. Yeah, no, here's that deal in the 90s. He's just such a, a, a dickhead. People don't like to talk about him this day. You know what? I wonder, like, he was some dickhead, but I think he really had, like, some actual mental issues that were probably Man. just, like, I'm, he's, he's got a long uh, controversy section, I'll put it like that. Yeah, he sure does. Like he, yeah, 1990, 
like he had a stint in uh, rehab for alcoholism. Like he constantly was like blowing up at like reporters. Like I, I really wonder if it was like something. He always seemed like something was off, and I don't want to armchair psychologist but it's like yeah you don't just run over a guy at second base for a double play that's a play you've done a hundred times right like a thousand times since you were 10 years old not albert bell (laughs) (laughs) he attained the rank of eagle scout in the boy scouts of america bell attended huntington high school where he was a star baseball and football player a member of the National Honor Society and vice president of the local future business leaders of America. He graduated six. Albert Bell, yeah. Yeah, this is the Albert Bell I know. He was offered an appointment to the uh, Air Force, played in the Junior Olympics, and graduated six at his high school class. Then he went to LSU to play college. Well, I'm at a yeah, college pitcher pitching at Albert, but 19 year old Albert Bell. <laughs> we'll medal that. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's no way they let him use a metal bat. <laughs> hey, you, hey, uh, hey, grab some lumber. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, listen, man. If I'll tell you what pitch I'm throwing, if you promise to use a wooden bat, <laughs> yeah, like, or if I can use one in batting uh, practice cages. <laughs> Tyler, while uh, this game gets cooking, it is uh, that time of year again, pal. Hmm? The one person in life that's always been in your corner, that's mom. Yeah, it is. From guiding you through life's mishaps to offering real-world advice and a shoulder to lean on, mom's made the ultimate investment in you. So this Mother's Day, celebrate her with 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, when you order early at 1-800-Flowers, you can get 30 assorted tulips, for 20% off the original. Wait, wait, wait. You said 30. I think you meant to say like three. No, no, no. Three, zero. 30. 13, I think. You no, no, no. Way, no, no. Way too many. Nope. Nearly three times that amount. Hmm. That's right. And hmm. also for 20% off the original. Yeah. It's a great way to make mom, every mom, feel loved when it matters most. Um, it, it Right now, like every year we do this, uh, mm-hmm. and right now this couldn't be simpler. Just yeah. you don't have to leave wherever you are. You just type it into your computer, bang, flowers show up. She's remembered. Her day is made. She literally birthed you. It's not that hard. Everybody wins here. And again, since we are going through this terrible situation, some fresh flowers Some during the springtime. Weather is nice. You get a nice bouquet of 30 flowers. Get some new fresh life into your home. You talk about putting some pep in someone's step. Listen, we've got the April showers. It's up to you to bring the May flowers. Nomar just cranked one. Bang. Yes, Saturday. <laughs> Two nothing, top of the first. How I think Twitter- funny look. I think Troy O'Leary is about to come up and hit a tank, too. Is this playoffs? Oh, yeah. This is a huge game. What uh, Yeah, like what round? Thank Hold you. on. Because uh, the more important sure, thing sure. is a bright mix of orange, yellow, and pink blooms. These tulips are guaranteed to show all the moms in your life just how much they are loved. 1-800-Flowers is committed to safety of their team members and your family. So all deliveries are contactless. Picking an early delivery date ensures that your bouquet will arrive in time to make mom's day special. 30 assorted tulips for $39.99 is an amazing offer, but availability is limited. So hurry and order today. Today. Just get it done. You'll be thankful you did. It's payday. You'll be very thankful. Also, you don't want one of those like, yeah, I got it in for the day before, but... I put mine in late. She's going to get it late Friday or Saturday. It might push it over to the weekend. Uh, right. Go on and get it. Lock it in. Uh, with limited delivery windows, you need to lock in your order early. Don't put this off. Order today from the official florist of Mother's Day, 1-800-Flowers.com. To order 30 tulips for $39.99, go to 1-800-Flowers.com. Click the radio icon, enter code MICK. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, code M-I-C-K. Hurry, this offer does end today. Hmm. <clears throat> so this is 1999 ALDS. Uh, okay. 
Red Sox, uh, Indians. Indians went up 2-0 in this series. And this is Charles game Nagy. five. Yes. <laughs> I do believe it's Nagy. Louis C.K. <laughs> yeah, that's the nag, man. Yeah, baseball don't even look like this no more. I feel like baseball is so bright when I watch it on TV now. Oh, yeah. It's Full always a game. Five. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's game five. Cleveland won game one, three to two. Game two, Troy 11 to one. Huh? Smoked him. Yeah. Troy O'Leary. <laughs> oh, yeah. It sure is, friend. Um, And then Red Sox won <laughs> game three, nine, three. Game four, 23 to seven. Okay. It's game Numbers five. On yeah, it's game five. We we're back in uh, Cleveland. This is for a chance to go play the Yankees. Pedro is very hurt, <laughs> extremely mm. hurt. So mm. Brett Sayrag and gets the gets the nod. And Save. and both of these pitchers, when I tell you, they get fucking shellacked. <laughs> I'll say this: those are it's like pitching duels are really fun, but both guys getting shelled is really fun too. It's like listen, mm-hmm. uh, I mean we're both going to stay in six innings, right? Like we're both giving up seven earned runs. Let's just let's ride this out. A few years ago, the Yankees were in the uh, play-in game, and mm-hmm. I believe they were playing the Twins because they always somehow get the Twins. I don't I don't understand. <laughs> I'm like nine years straight, right? Yeah, and the Twins uh, get hours every that. time. <laughs> yeah. And the Twins, like Luis Severino started. He made it one-third of an inning, just got fucking shelled. And it was like, holy shit, the Twins, like, the Twins never have the lead first. They have a good lead. Like, this is going to be the time. Top of the first, Yankees tie it. <laughs> yeah, just grand opening. Grand yeah, and it was like, nope, they don't got it. Never mind. <laughs> Forget I said anything. Yeah, it was just like, whoops. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Brett Saberhagen, youngest at the time, at least youngest AL Cy Young winner ever. I believe youngest Cy Young winner ever. Uh, that had happened a smooth decade prior to this game, so it really didn't help him here. No, I thought Clemens was the. What is he? Twenty or no? I thought uh, Doc Gooden was the youngest. Doc was certainly NL, so maybe it was AL. Uh, that's wild. It was Kenny Lofton just being cool as hell? Very cool. Wayne's brother star, Arizona basketball star, gold chain aficionado. But yeah, after the third inning, this game is eight to seven. <laughs> okay. And the Indians the Indians do not score again the rest of the game. Mm. They hang a three, a two, and a three in the first three innings, and then they don't even get another hit the rest of the game, Tyler. Not a one. I mean, listen, if going into the game, you're like, would you take a three, two, or three, and uh, whatever, eight hits for the game? Hell yeah. Just one of them days. These for, it's, it's, it's the most intriguing game i've ever seen and i don't even say that because like pedro comes in does what he does but i've never seen a game with so much offense like usually when you get offense early it's like all right these guys it doesn't matter who's pitching everyone's seeing the ball right this game has so much offense early and then just comes to a screeching halt for two-thirds of it (laughs) like most of the game has no offense that's preferred that way you don't want to six innings and nothing ball (laughs) and then it gets hot p you garden hire can't believe it Oh, yeah. At least I knew that was a walk. 8-7, final 12-8. Pedro comes out of the bullpen throwing pretty much only curveballs, six no-hit innings. <laughs> That's what needed to be done. There's a point in this game where there are three relievers warming up, which is a thing you'd never see. <laughs> like Pedro puts himself in. He's just like, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> I've seen enough. <laughs> Enough, dude. <laughs> Stand aside, <Sizemore>. or, oh, <laughs> man. It's, it's fucking um, Rod Beck's oh, one of them. I can't remember oh, who else is coming up. Wow. Is this guy in the Hall of Fame? He's not in the Hall of Fame, is he? 
If he isn't, I know people are pushing for it. I was going to say, I feel like he's at the push. I just don't. Let's see. No. <laughs> Personal life. He, he, feud with Jose Mesa. That's the whole tag. <laughs> <laughs> Mesa wow. Mesa will feud with the best of them. He's not afraid. A long running and well publicized feud erupted between Vizcaya and former teammate and friend Jose Mesa. 2002, following the publication of his autobiography, Omar, My Life on and Off the Field, Vizcaya criticized Mesa's performance in Game 7 of the 97 World Series. That's cold. Yeah, the eyes, of, the eyes of the world were focused on every move we made. Unfortunately, Jose's own eyes were vacant, completely empty. Nobody home. You could almost see right through him. Not long after I looked into his vacant eyes, he blew the save and the Marlins tied the game. <laughs> he was dead like a shark. Eh? <laughs> hey, fucking roast his ass. Get his ass, Omar. <laughs> Mesa reacted furiously. Pledging to hit Vizcaya up on every subsequent opportunity. <laughs> Even my little boy told me to hit him. If I face him 10 more times, I'll hit him 10 times. I want to kill him. On June 12, 2002, Mesa hit Vizcaya with a pitch in the ninth inning. Mesa was not ejected and finished the game. They did not face each other again until 2006. Vizcaya was with the Giants. <laughs> Vizcaya was with the Giants. Mesa was playing with the Colorado Rockies. When Vizcaya came to bat against Mesa in Denver on April 22nd, Mesa hit him again. <laughs> I love that. Man of his word. <laughs> Meeting three more times, however, Vizcaya escaped being hit by his former teammates with two ground outs and an RBI single. Coward. Yeah, I was. that's one of those. The league must have stepped in like behind closed doors. You think Jose Mesa listening to the league behind closed doors? Mesa was a bad boy, wasn't he? I don't think he was the bad. I think he's also dead. Uh, uh, uh. No, he's alive. And maybe a bad guy. Oh, yeah. I'm going to exit that out. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it wasn't good. No. Yeah. No, it sure wasn't. Locked yeah, who am I? It is a safer, uh, say, a closer that died. <laughs> Saver. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. They got the, the baby, the baby man. Yeah, and it was someone with like a relatively similar name. Yeah, who was the I, like they were like some shit for a while too. Closer. Yeah, let's see what Google has to say. <laughs> List of the closer episodes. <laughs> Uribe? No. Juan Uribe? Jose Uribe is dead. Is that what I was thinking of? The second, he's Juan Uribe's cousin. Jesus Christ. Yeah, he was killed no. at 47. Right, this is not who I'm thinking of. But. Yeah, that was 06. This was like a few years ago. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. But That's uh, why I thought it was Mesa. This his personal wife, uh, Jose Uribe, his first wife, Sarah, died at the age of 27 of a heart attack two days after giving birth to their third child. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna exit this out too. Who's this goddamn closer? Yeah, I know somebody. This is where we, this is where the live stream would come in handy. Somebody would say it in two seconds. Mm -hmm. Somebody knows exactly who it is. I just keep Googling former, like, this team, closer dead. Former that team. Yeah. <laughs> it's not working. Let's see. Let's try former closer. Killed. No, I think he just died, like, some of his heart. Because he was, like, his family kidnapped or something, right? That happens a lot with baseball, sadly. Yeah, but this, yeah, but this is, again, this is also the one that died, so. You get Urbina? Was it him? Nah. No, he he was involved in a lot though. He was a wild oh. boy too. Yeah. Look at man. It was okay. that too. Yeah, his mother, and then he got hell on an attempted murder charge. Hey, mm -hmm. Venezuela, Venezuela, wild man. There was a 
Oh, it's killing me. I can't remember this guy's name. There was a catcher for the Nationals who just straight up got kidnapped one offseason. Was it Wilson Ramos? Was that who it was? Maybe. Make it. Yeah. Wilson Ramos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit. <laughs> well, in- <laughs> Venezuela, man. November 11th, approximately 6.45, Ramos was kidnapped by gunpoint from his mother's home. According to his account, four gunmen threw him into the back of a Chevrolet captive and drove him to a mountainous region near the town of Montalban. Approximately 4 p.m. local time, he was reported alive. He was rescued November 12th. Yeah, they kept him for a couple days. After being held and kept heavy for 50 hours, the police rescued Ramos after exchanging gunfire with the kidnappers. So shit got real. I know Venezuela was out there, out there. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Who is this catcher or this closer, man? I, I'm i typing everything I can possibly think of, and it's just bringing me to other dead people. It's telling I was me like, I don't, even, I don't even know what to tweet. To you, what, who's that closer? Dead? Yeah, who's that dead closer? People just everybody do that. Like, Two shoes, Joan. I'm like, not nah, him. <laughs> oh, you gotta you gotta watch this. Tell me at bet because you want to talk about a guy who cranked dingers. I, mean, I thought about. I was like, boy, the AL. What is it? AL Central. They had Tommy and Frank Thomas. Just dinger after dinger. I also think Manny threw this game because he was uncharacteristically bad. Maybe. For the whole series, he had uh, 0. 0.56. <laughs> yeah. That's rock. Maybe he, uh, he's like, I can't wait to play for these guys later. He signs with them two months later. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> I like I like what they got going on over there. Tommy's ready to put one on the moon. Yeah, he just got that look to him. He's a guy, too. I've just never believed he was unjuiced, despite all the facts. <laughs> was, was, he a, was he in the reports and stuff? No, I don't think he was in the reports, but he just played in that era, and he was fucking huge. Like, it's it's tough to be like, you know, that's a clean guy. Yeah, but it's, I feel, again, I feel like he and Frank Thomas, they're like, nah, those those are just big country guys man no i agree i agree a thousand percent and i i know frank thomas was like please test me i don't know tommy feels like a police he's like listen you're gonna find steak and potatoes in there buddy right and he's like there weren't a lot of potatoes this month just steak. Yeah, no mostly steak yes everybody listen <laughs> this man's not on steroids but his cholesterol is sky high <laughs> Tommy's like, mm-hmm, clean, just like I told you. This is another guy. If he were a righty, he's he's in the show for a bang. Woo! <laughs> that, that pitch was oh, in the other batter's box. Yeah. Burt Alomar. It's best when the outfielders don't even, like, fake run. They're just like, yeah. Yeah. You know, the no turnaround is all yeah. time. Hang the socks out to dry. That's fire. I didn't care for it. You guys are done. <laughs> oh, are we? Yeah, I'm certain of it. Let me see, because I know he. It's the whole game? game. Jesus. Yeah, we're not watching the whole game. Back oh, yeah, game. but I didn't. No, but that's why I'm like, I'm surprised. Uh, blank league, blank ball uh, has a full game on here. Is allowed. They upload. Yeah, they uploaded this. Hmm. That's how fire this game is. Had, had to have been, yeah. It was like, nah, y'all need to see the lights too, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, those those oh. Cleveland jerseys are, jackets are so strong. Did he just hit this ball? No, Andy it's gone. Oh, yeah. Wow. Junior? Wow. Why does kid plays anymore? Why doesn't Barry Bonds Jr.? Uh, I was convinced like Troy O'Leary was just our Ken Griffey Jr. I know I've said that before, but I like watching him growing up. I was like, it's the same guy. Like, I don't know. Yeah, no, listen, black uh, fits the bill. Woo! 
Hey, let's, honest to God, I think I could have hit that one out, man. <laughs> this is where umpires don't get enough credit. They call this a double on the field, no replay, and they overrule it correctly. To a homer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Catch no, this one, they're right there, right there. How far did you have to run to get some? Uh... <laughs> well, since it's the playoffs, they have the outfield umps too. Like, there's more on the field. Uh, yeah, but he's like, hey, can you meet me halfway, Jerry? Like, <laughs> you, see, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're... I am far too drunk for that run. What? Right. I got the mittens on. You know, it was a big game in Cleveland. Oh, yeah. Yeah, y'all talking about. <laughs> Said the ball went out. I don't know if the shit went out. You think it went out? Yeah, He's a man. Right. I, don't, I don't know if this shit went out. He's like, bro, I was 350 feet away. You were right there. Yeah. He's like, you see me jog up. You know how you see it. The coach is like, that's my whole point. How his dumb ass see it? No disrespect, Mike. Uh, but he was on the other side of the field. They're like, yeah, let's go ask a home plate yeah. when he's <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go ask Donald Trump. Uh <laughs> Big ass shoulder pads and head of hair. That's a uh, no. Nah, that's a uh, what's this? Uh, Tywin Lannister. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. Yeah, I definitely see it. Yeah, Travis, Travis Fryman. Fryman. Okay, Jimmy Williams. Are you shitting me? There's no way you idiots saw that. <laughs> Nah, that's Tywin Lannister, dude. I know that, that head of hair and that stance anywhere. He's standing over a, a chessboard. No, Cleveland was loaded. Yeah. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Ierga, Alomar, Ramirez, Tommy, Nagy, Lofton. And they what, made two World Series or made one? I know they made one. I don't think they made two. I know they I was gonna say I think they went game seven uh in or excuse me, ALCS. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they're a big time. They blew a three one lead. People don't like to talk about it. I, the Braves getting that one saved them from becoming from getting this. that heated up. Derek Lowe trying his best. <laughs> hey, that's a World Series hero, Derek Lowe. Oh, trust me. It 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 pays off in the long run, but this was well in the day. <laughs> All right, Jose Offerman. Jose Offerman. <laughs> you talking man with, about a man with some demons? Oh, the off man to that guy? No, well, he beat the shit out of that ump with a bat when he was in the minors. Yeah, I remember that. It was very viral. Uh, let's see, does Nomar do a thing here? You think he might? Omar looks slim, man. That's before he took that uh, picture where his back was wider than all the sports industry. I honestly think it's after. No, that's what he's after. He already cut the stuff I see. Maybe. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, they made, yeah, they made two yeah. World Series. They lost to the Braves, and then they lost to the Marlins in seven. Marlins, yeah. And then the next year, they lost to the Yankees in the ALCS in six. Yeah, it was and tough they, being a... Uh... An Indians fan because then they went it through was, it all again in, in the 2000s and then they lost to the Cubs in 16. Like, it's just never their turn. <laughs> you talk about a forgotten I, moment. I remember that. I was like, I was like, boy, when, I know uh, it's a great story line, curse versus curse, but it's like one of these games is like, are you shitting me? <laughs> when, um, who hit that fucking home run that gave him the lead, then it didn't even matter. The fact that I'm saying that proves my point. That would have been an all-time. Aaron Boone. No, no. <laughs> That's why I used to have to act physically throw the four pitches. Up until like two years ago. Yeah, I was going to say, I remember when they changed. It was groundbreaking. I know some dude fought for that for like 12 years. He's like, this is my life's work. Rajai Davis. Rajay Davis cracked uh, yeah, the finger, yeah, yeah. and then it just meant nothing. Yeah. The base is juiced? You only know the base is juiced when they start with third base. Right. Third and never, first. Yeah. Never third to first. Yeah, never third to first. Never just a guy on third. 
thing. <laughs> First energy. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. Troy O'Leary is the truth. He's like, I'll be damn. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> The best thing about like baseball, man, like after anything like this, okay, in football, yeah, okay, how do we give up a big play? Basketball, how do we give up a big shot? Baseball is like, hey, man, there's literally nothing I can do from the sidelines. <laughs> I, I, don't throw that pitch next time. Like maybe uh, I put it away a little bit. Oh, yeah, Manny does hit a, a double here, I think. Or oh, a, a, a gapper. RBI single, and then I think Tommy comes up and cracks another dinger. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, now my, my second steak is digested, and I'm ready to play some ball. Um, oh, what was I about to fucking say? Derek was just like, I'm playing some baseball. Can't complain. Yeah, <laughs> Living the dream. <laughs> Small town boy. <laughs> Oh yeah, Tommy's coming up. He's okay, like, "Hey, tight his clothes real tight." <laughs> He's like, "Oh, the getting's good. All right." Yeah, yeah. Manny just gave him a sign. Manny don't even know his name. Was just like, "Hey, you, you." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we played together for five years. Yeah. No. Oh, oh yeah. He's <laughs> big hacks. Yeah. <laughs> this place is rocking right now. He's like, "I'm going fucking tank, bro." Yeah. No, he's 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 oh, yeah. square but. He's power button swing. This was the question. We'll get to it after this. What? Oh. Hey, that's the worst shit on the show, too, man. When you just like, that was the one. That was the one pitch I prayed for. And Lowe no, Low knew it. He's like, there's no way I should have threw that pitch. Yeah. What the hell did I? <laughs> that, ball, that ball was on a string up there. Why did I, why did I do that? <laughs> I'm going to do it again. I'm going to see if I can. <laughs> He's like, let me throw this like uh, to the Tiger Stadium. Let me make sure it's nowhere yeah. near him. Let me see if I could. And Tommy was still like, I think I can get a bet on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can get that over the left of his head. Man, like he's gonna steal a base, quick man. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> Dead center. It's like the center fitter was trying to play it. Tommy was like, no, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah. That one's gone. Yeah. He was like, I've seen it now. Echolo was like, ah, yeah. oh, shucks. <laughs> He's like, I was having so much more fun before that. Remember, the Red Sox uh, were happening before this at a grand slam. <laughs> Erased. Yeah. It's just even Steven. But the question is. Uh, what sport would be the funniest? I saw this on Twitter. I can't remember who was talking about it, but what sport would be the funniest if it had to adapt baseball's rule where the manager had to go full <laughs> uniform? I think it's got to uh, be football. I think it's got to be basketball. <laughs> think about how much. Listen. <laughs> Think about how much skin you show in basketball. But that's the thing. Like when you're sitting on, yeah, Pedro's up. Oh, he's, like, I'm sick, sick of this shit. <laughs> he's like, I, my arm, I can't even feel my arm. I haven't been able to in several weeks. Um, in basketball, when you're sitting on the bench, you're wearing the the warm ups too. So like everyone would just like bo- look like Bob Huggins. I don't think it would be that bad. Yeah, but then uh, <laughs> it's time to check in, and you see Nick Nurse uh, go up to the. <laughs> He gets uh, he getting mad. He takes off his jacket like Buzz <laughs> Williams halfway through the game. He unzips it. He's like enough. Yeah, and you just see Nick Nick Nurse is just like flail arms, just calling plays. <laughs> nah, that and he's. I'm also imagining like the double slap socks uh, and like some high oh, yeah. top you some Ewings. I was, yeah, imagine the coaches in different shoes. That's funnier than the NFL to me. Like just. A, Popovich pull it New Balance. He seemed like a New Balance guy. No Kawhi. So. Yeah. yeah, that'd be very funny. Van Gundy <laughs> all those years. <laughs> either. Like either Van Gundy. Right. Correct. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Nah, this is funnier than I'm at like Phil Jackson looks so cool, calm, collected in a suit. But if you just cut to him just on the sideline, just in a jersey and shorts, like I Bulls don't win a single championship, dude. <laughs> Not a one. 
I th- like football could work because you get a guy like one of those. It's got to be the young Jack coach. It's like, boy, Brian Flores is over there like head button guys. Like guys, they're really getting into oh. it. Listen, I think the Steelers probably have like five more rings if Tomlin's in full. full uh, yeah, yeah. Regalia, yeah. And Mike Nolan was like, can we wear suits like my old man? And they were like, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Dumb yeah. Low is trying it, man. I, I mean, would have put about that getting on. squeezed. That was a strike. Uh, no, but I'm saying he should have put that over the moon. Listen, he's not worried about Travis Fryman. He, he should be. <laughs> he didn't give up that dinger to Fryman earlier. Which one? Which dinger did he give up? That Fry- uh, they, these uh, pitches just oh, lingering, man. Yeah, I guess three people: <laughs> Rod, Beck, Pedro. It, Pedro's like, you know, I'm going in, right? The other guy's like, I mean, I'm already up. I want to keep warm, you know. <laughs> like, oh. Again, like I said, the managers are like, we cannot let Pedro go in. Pedro's like, not your call. <laughs> the doctor's like, I've, I'll quit if you put him in. He's like, listen, I told you it's out of our hands. He's already on the mound, like. So yeah, He's still up. Go in there and stro- uh, throw strikes. People just watching him over the game. People are like, yeah, this is much better. <laughs> They're like, I hope that guy doesn't come in. Yeah. Like, you think we could like hit him with a can or something? <laughs> Maybe head bum shoulder. <laughs> uh, I wish it was, it was his whole back. <laughs> like, this was the All Star game year where he struck out five of the six people he faced. So, like, he was, he was. Cooking, but he got hurt in September. So showing off when it didn't count. Darren Lewis. That's what you get for weighing 142 pounds. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Between never, world, never. <laughs> no, no, you sure wouldn't. Between never-ending cycles and in or laundry cycles and incoming emails, you've got plenty on your to-do list. Give yeah, yourself no. one less thing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> Let DoorDash take care of your next meal. That's right. Huh. DoorDash is the app that brings you food, your craving, right now, right to your door. Ordering is easy. It's a breeze. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be safely left outside your door with a new contactless delivery drop-off setting. I hope we never go back to contact. Honest Order- to God. <laughs> It's Just leave bad. it on the floor. Just put it on the floor, man. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your local go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Chipotle, Wendy's, and the Cheesecake Factory. That's right. Many of your favorite local restaurants are still open for delivery. Just open the DoorDash app, select your favorite local restaurant, and your food will be left at your door. DoorDash deliveries are now contactless to keep communities we operate in safe. Right now, our listeners can get $5 off their first order of 15 bucks or more and zero delivery fees for the first month when you download the DoorDash app and enter code MIX. That's $5 off your first order, zero delivery fees for a month when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code M-I-C-K-S. Don't forget, that's code MIX for $5 off and free delivery for the first month, your first uh, with DoorDash. Jokes on y'all. I'm going to enter it too. <laughs> God damn it. Um, we got Langston Galloway. Yes. Our, our newest, most learned friend. Mm. Uh, he was an interesting guy. Yeah, you guys had an interesting run of it, man. From then he he was like he was a straight shooter too. Like we, we yeah. asked the question, he was just like, "Here's the answer." Yeah, no, he's he's very. Uh, <laughs> there's no wiggle room. Uh, yeah, no, with the Lang man. But I asked I asked him what's wrong with the Knicks, and he but gave an answer. He was like, "Listen, here's yeah. the problem with the Knicks." <laughs> yeah, he was like, uh, "How much time we got? Are we rolling?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we get right into it. He was great. Yeah. Uh, so shout out Langston Galloway. Uh, yes. Again, thank you for coming on. And uh, yeah, that was the, that was the end of uh, the Cleveland Indians scoring uh, 
So I'm uh, going to log off and watch the rest of this Pedro uh, masterpiece. You don't have to. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I might really have to just like blog this game because I don't think I it, think it, you, yeah. in a historic, I'm sure I have before too, but like in a historical context, I can't think of a single other game and it's baseball. So it's, right. it has the largest sample set, like everything. It's only happens. history. Yeah. Right. So like, I'm sure there's like 1932 Whitey Ford uh, actually. And <laughs> but, nope, not even the, yeah. Right. Uh, just seeing, <laughs> Seeing what was it, uh, fifteen total runs in the first three innings, and then, and then that was that. Then yeah, just he's like enough, enough. <laughs> yeah, fair to like I'm, I'm gonna use my left hand, like whatever it takes. Yeah, like uh, I will roll the ball down there like a bowling ball if you all stop giving up these uh, golfer these gopher balls. He also takes out Kenny Anderson uh, unintentionally. Un yeah. Kenny hits like a dribbler up the line and then like tries to slide head first into first and just dislocates his shoulder. That'll do it. Yeah. Every time it'll do it every time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're head over to light. And again, this Sunday uh, we're doing all time uh, wrestling songs and I'm sure that'll devolve into many other things. Uh, with the one and only Bob Fox, maybe other uh, wrestling aficionados will also. Uh, maybe we'll do it like uh, like the Royal Rumble. I'll, we'll just count down, and someone else will run into the ring. <laughs> like good God, that's Brandon Walker's music. <laughs> <laughs> now listen. The dude, and we'll talk about it, but I got to say, I'm about to go listen to that Val Venus theme song uh, time after time until I go to bed. He played the hell out of that horn. Kenny G is never, Kenny G don't have a song better than that. Oh, boy. That's just how it go. That's just how it go. Oh, boy. He don't have a single song better than the Val Venus thing. Dude put his foot in that saxophone. I think John, Jim Johnston. Man. I feel like that's the guy, he does like most of their themes. I think he. I was like, I slick need an IG producer battle with Jim Johnston. <laughs> like, oh y'all. <laughs> oh, okay. I was feeling that. I was feeling that. Y'all remember this? If you smile, like oh. Because I remember when uh, uh, Fandango came up. This was like very recently. This was like the last decade. His theme song was so electric because it was just like uh, like tango music. And yeah. just like walking out to that and it's also now uh it, i don't know why i called it F fandango's music it's dave's emergency press conference music <laughs> oh is that where that came from Who's music? Yes. Who's music? Yes. <laughs> fandango like the app yes I, I, I never knew where that music came from yes it's very funny oh but it's pretty. I'm looking at it right now. Produced by Jim Johnston. <laughs> That's uh, why I knew that. That's why I knew that because I had downloaded that a long time ago, and I always knew him as the uh, the artist. Johnston, he just got bangers, man. It is what it is. Yeah, and across cultures too. He yeah. can do it all. That's just a guy that just gets it. So I yeah. I do. <laughs> That Val Venus thing. Uh, yeah, just go listen. It's on Apple Music. Just listen, just type in Val Venus. There's no reason for him to put his foot in this song. No, he but he did it. We'll it had to, to be it. done. So, yeah, enjoy Langston Galloway. We'll see you guys uh, Sunday. See ya. Hey, Langston. Man, on, my man? Fault, fellas. My fault, man. No worries. No worries. Man, this, this computer right here is crazy. <laughs> so we used to do this show with Terry Rozier for a while. Yeah, we're doing good. We used to do this show with Terry Rozier. Do NBA players just not own laptops and computers? Oh, what you said? It broke up a little bit. I'm sorry. No worries. Like, do like we used to do this show with Terry Rozier for a little while, and he just oh, never. 
he yeah, he would be like, oh, I left my laptop in Miami. I left it in like Boston. Like, do NBA players just not have a need for computers at all? <laughs> yeah, not really. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, you 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 get on your iPad or your phone and you just keep on rolling. You keep on rolling. But I've been I've been like really like getting back into my laptop the last what? Two months now. I'm I'm in a class, so I got like updated every every two two nights and whatnot. So, yeah, this this thing right here, boy, is crazy. What uh, what kind of class you taking? Is that the, the uh, podcast in school? No, no, no. I already did that one. Uh, so basically, I'm doing uh, uh, to get my certification to be a trainer, um, okay. like a professional trainer. So uh, I'm doing that right now. Um, should be should be something dope to you know entertain my time. That feels like a super hands-on course. Like, how is that through the computer? So basically, uh, it's more like interactive. Like, you got a, um, you're in a class, but you have uh, different uh, teachers and mentors that are basically like just making sure that you're good. You ch- they're, they're checking in with you. You're checking in with them, and then uh, when you're doing different like quizzes and whatnot, like there's a class like. Uh, Basically, like um, I don't want to say syllabus. It's like a um, like a little Checklist. like studio, yeah, like a studio where you can kind of like put your input into it, and then everybody can comment from there. So it's pretty cool. I, uh, yeah, we're into the interview now. I didn't want you to. Oh yeah, no, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're just going now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, know. yeah, we're with uh, <laughs> Langston Galloway, the Detroit Pistons. Thank you for joining us, sir. Yeah, yeah, glad to be here. Sorry, sorry. Like I said, I'm late. But uh, I'm glad to be here. Listen, glad to be here. Sure. The audience doesn't know you're late. You don't have to say that. Yeah. You're fine. We're, <laughs> we're rolling. Also, time doesn't exist anymore, Lance. And that's the true. one thing I've learned in quarantine. Time doesn't really exist. It really doesn't. That's so crazy. But it's true, though. It really is true. So I got to say, first question, you're big sneaker head, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay, so I got a favorite pair and your favorite pair that you don't own yet. Uh, favorite of all time, Jordan 13, he got games. Uh, that was like okay. my favorite um story behind them um and then uh one i don't have is the air mags i've, I've been oh, trying to get them but they just man they, they're way out of my league right now way out of my league i mean they're not with that attitude come on <laughs> hey they're out of my league i'm gonna just keep it like that <laughs> you're literally like we all love sneakers i think everyone uh does these days dropping 12 grand on a pair Feels irresponsible. Man, it does. It does. Cause you I mean, especially when you got a family and you got a lot going on. I got a family now, so I can't be just wasting money on no sneakers. Okay. Counterpoint. Can you wear your family to the club? Mm. Man. Just yeah. something to consider. Just something to consider. I'm sure you're a lovely family, I'm sure, but can you wear them to the club? Can you wear them Please. like to a game? I don't think so. But yeah, even true. something like that, like, are you a are you a wear guy or are you like the type to just have them and keep them like on the shelf? Like, oh yeah, I nah, have those. I'm gonna wear mine. I'm gonna wear Good. mine. I like Good. it. I, I I I stash like the ones that you know everybody's hyped up about, and then I wear them like three years down the line. Like, all right, boom. Like, all right, remember these? Yeah. Everybody else in war theirs. It's like mine's still fresh. So them the ones I stash. But everything else though, like I, I try to like you know. Whatever comes out, I rock it. I like that. I feel like too many people cop just to take that one picture in them. Like they get the matching shirt, they right. buy like a St. Louis Reds hat, and then <laughs> just posted and, and put then, them on the wall. Yeah, yeah. And then you never see them wear them again. It's like, well, what was that for? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. What's your favorite to play in? Uh, shoot, I got my own shoe. I got my own shoe, the Q4 Sports. Uh, so I, I rock them every single game. Just get them customized and whatnot. Um, but you know, going in sneaker free agency this summer, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens going forward. How'd you get involved with them like your own shoe? Uh, so one actually, one of my boys he uh he linked me with him, was like, Yo, uh, I got an opportunity for you to you know, I know you love sneakers and something that's um you're kind of passionate about. Why don't you you get with this brand? It might not be your Nikes, your Adidas, uh, or the bigger brands, but. It'd be something that you can kind of look back and say, all right, oh, well, I, I made an imprint on that company. And so they kind of gave me a little equity in the company and um, just like I said, gave my own shoe. And that's, you know, for every every athlete, every basketball player that uh, I kind of talk to, everybody wants their own sneaker. Everybody wants to be their own brand. So um, being able to do that, man, that was that was clutch. And uh, I really enjoy it. I've really been enjoying it and going to continue to enjoy it. 
I want my own shoe, and I'm not even a player, so I, I definitely <laughs> understand jumping on that. Right, right. I feel like you could do it. I think I could too. No, like literally, no company agrees with me yet. Yeah, yeah. it's a hurdle. Yeah, it's certainly a hurdle. Yeah, you just gotta keep. Hey, look, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing the limits. Yeah, right. So, like, when you're when you're lined up against like Spencer Dinwiddie, are you guys like checking yourself out, being like, "No, mine are nicer than yours." Uh. I've mm-hmm. never said much to Spencer mm-hmm. about the shoes other than like we're on Instagram, like we're talking about like, all right, you got this one. Uh maybe make, making sure I don't copy him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, now we, we haven't really said much about like each other's shoes and, and especially in games, like we really rarely say anything. So who's the top dog in the shoe world? I feel like PJ Tucker gets the hype, but is he the is he the one that ever even the sneakerheads agree? It's like, yeah, no, nah, he's 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 the one. No, I mean he he's the one that, you know, wears everything on the court. He wears from uh Yeezys to I mean, you name it. Everything that comes out, he's he's worn it. So Timberlands, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean <laughs> everything. Like he literally uh he has a crown for a reason. Um so I, I mean, he's a, a whole other stratosphere, so I never compare myself to him. I just, you know, I I I love how I've started my own brand, LG Kicks. And uh, and kind of like the story behind it is like it, it talks about your story, your collection. So everybody's gonna have a different collection. Whatever you like, that's what that's what kind of speaks to you. And uh, and that's what you know. With me, I, I'm able to customize my kicks and you know draw a different lane. How how hard has it been in quarantine? Being uh, like, how have you been able to hoop? Have you even picked like Jason Tatum said he hasn't even picked up a basketball since since the season ended, which feels reckless. Right. Uh, like, how have you how have you been staying, if, even if not in game shape, like mentally in shape? Yeah, so uh, me and my wife we actually put together like a makeshift gym in the backyard. We got like a little like small out, outdoor in the backyard, and we literally uh, first we kind of put together weights and did different things like that. And then, uh, like recently, I put uh, like a turf and uh, and like some rubber mats on the backyard. So, so now I got my gold in the backyard. I got my shoe machine, and uh, you know, I could be back there all day just shooting, um, doing whatever I need to do to just stay in shape, stay ready. So, that's been great the last couple of days, getting getting everything finished up out there, and then now I can kind of do what I want. So you're basically just back in college. You're taking classes, and then you're just hooping the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Take, look, I got interviews, I got uh, podcasts, I got school, and then I got little man, uh, and then uh, you know, then I got to go back out there and get it working. So you're begging for the lead to get back. It's like I got a full <laughs> plate, man. I got to. Can we please get back to playing? Look, my wife, she's like, uh, she gets upset with me. She's like, look, when you're playing, you go from you leave the house like seven, eight o'clock in the morning, and you don't come back until four. So I was telling her, I was like, look, I got to stay busy from eight to four. So that way, you know, you don't add nothing to my plate. And if you add something to my plate, it's going to be some honeydew job that I want to do. So right. you know, it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool, though, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Just drive around the block from like 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Right. <laughs> Kill some time, yeah. Yeah, it'd be good. Hey, look, they, they won't never know I'm, I'm gone. Never exactly. know. I'm gone. Yeah. Um, so you're from Louisiana, yeah? Yeah, from Louisiana, yep. So who's the goat? Is it Boosie? Is it Wayne? Who's the goat? That's a tough question right there, man. I'm, so I'm from Baton Rouge. So Boosie, you know, what I mean, is mm-hmm. is big down here. Uh, uh, but I mean, I kind I kind of listen to everything. I, I'm I'm kind of all over the place. Wayne, Boosie, uh, I, I kind of can go back and forth. So I kind of play just Louisiana car. I, I love it. Louisiana rappers, and you know, it, it always is in my my playlist for sure. You went to college in Philly. What was it like when you first got uh, on campus and started playing Boosie? Was everyone like, "What the hell's going on here?" Yeah, yeah. Now most most people was that's when like uh, turn it off. Meek Mill, <laughs> Meek Mill. No, Meek Mill was like blowing up, uh, but like he was just hyped up. And a couple of my boys was like, "What is he saying? Like, what are you talking about man?" That's what they kept asking about Boosie. Most of them knew about Wayne. Everybody, everybody kind of right, knew. Right, right. He's like, kind of like viral everywhere. Uh, but yeah, now most dudes just didn't know anything about Boosie. Um, shoot, the biggest, the biggest thing for me was shoot the cold weather when I went up there, man. I just, mm. I never seen nothing like that. It was freezing up there. It was, 
my first, my first uh, September, it was like 50 degrees. I'm, I got a big old puff jacket on, like, <laughs> make sure I'm staying warm. Everybody looking at me like, what you what you doing? It's, 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 cold. it's hot outside. I'm like, nah. <laughs> yeah. What's up? You, you an LSU fan? Big LSU. Big LSU okay. fan, big Saints fan. So uh, we – Louisiana sports been doing good for themselves. I can't really speak for the Pelicans, but uh, every, everything else, I'm doing well. Hey, it's coming for them. Uh, but, so, but so what do you think about Taysom Hill, uh, quarterback of the future? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I really wanted them to keep Teddy and uh, mm-hmm. use him in the future. But, yeah. you know, uh, Taysom, he, he's versatile. He can kind of do wide receiver position. He can kind of do punt returns. He can kind of do uh, quarterback a little bit. So, uh, you never know. You never know what uh, the future holds for him, and um, I, I hope he just he stays healthy. And uh, and then now we got Jameis on the team now too, so mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. I think Taysom Hill's thrown less passes than Muhammad Sanu, so yeah, yeah I wouldn't be. I would, I'd be pushing for Jameis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Do you still believe in Drew Brees? Uh, he's getting older. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, boy, <laughs> <laughs> getting old, boy. So I'm from. Uh, Boston, are you worried Tom Brady's down there now, or do you think he's washed up? No, no, no. I'm worried because, I mean, think about the whole NFC South has kind of changed overnight, really. I mean, we went from Saints being the, like, the dominant team. Now you got Tampa Bay having Tom Brady and Gronk. You got uh, Carolina having uh, Teddy, and I think they got uh, – what's, what's the running back name? I forgot to run McCaffrey. Back. McCaffrey, yep. And then Atlanta, I mean, they still got Matt Ryan. He's still shaking. Yeah, with <laughs> yeah but, don't worry about Atlanta. Yeah, yeah somebody yeah, got to be fourth place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, hey, along, along with uh, top two, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. That's fair. Yeah. Do you th- How many games does Drew Brees start this year? I'm really worried about oh, him. Boy. Um, Over 10 or under 10? I feel like we see a lot of Jameis and Taysom this year. Yeah, I, I think that's what, that's what we're moving towards because – this I think the, the contract that he signed since it was so because it was a what two year fifty million something like that or forty one million Drew Brees, yeah something yeah. like yeah Brees yeah. more than so uh, I think that was basically like a hey this is your severance package right <laughs> right <laughs> one Thank last, yeah thanks for everything thanks, thanks for the memories everything. we appreciate all you done you got us the Super Bowl you put us back on the map thank you thank you and everybody else going going to try to like fit in now fit in, find right. ways. So it's like he's already signed on with what is it, NBC for after his playing days. Yeah. Yep. 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 So you've probably seen a lot more interviews and stuff with him. Has he ever said anything interesting that makes me think he's going to be good at TV? Because that was a weird one for me. No, nah, I haven't really heard. <laughs> <laughs> he's very boring. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> nah, he he kind of sticks, you know, vanilla. He keeps, keeps it yeah. very vanilla. Very vanilla. Yeah, that works like, like safe. I guess that'll work. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. Stay safe, yeah, safe, very safe. So, are you watching the uh, the Jordan documentary on ESPN right now? Sure, yeah, and I'm I'm tuned in to every one of. Them. So last night being a very anti Pistons episode, what, what? How did that hit you? It was just like, man, these guys should have shook their hands or something. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was tough to see because it kind of painted the Pistons in in a, in a like a a weird way, um, saying yeah, like. You kind of go from watching 30 for 30 with the Pistons, right? Mm-hmm. Seeing that, you're like, man, the Pistons were, you know, the end all be all to now looking on the other perspective of like, man, they walked off the court, they didn't shake our hands, like, screw them, like, we ain't messing with them at all. So I, I think I think it was actually uh, a, a great, like, come, kind of coming to, coming out of mind because they had Isaiah come on in for a second, just speak to like, Hey, uh, you know, I carried it this way when I was playing, and I carried it this way while I'm not playing. But it is what it is. I mean, they, I mean, they all gonna have their own grudges and, and personal vendettas. So it kind of just stays in, in whatever they wanted wanted to stay. Yeah, I don't think Jordan bought it when Isaiah was talking <laughs> about it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he he went for it uh, between us three. Yeah, nah. He, he I mean. Like I said, it, at the end of the day, it's it's, it's your opinion. It's, a, it's his opinion. So uh, Jordan going to feel how you want to feel. Sure. He's not a fan. Uh, Isaiah is so weird to me, like being a Chicago kid and then playing for Chicago's biggest rival. Like he's loved and hated by those people. Like I, I can't even imagine what that's like. 
Yeah, it's tough. It's tough because um, I've like kind of seen, especially like having, having D Rose on the team. Like mm. it's the same thing with him too. It's like he played for Chicago. I mean, not Isaiah didn't play for Chicago, but still, right. like being from Chicago, playing mm. there with D Rose, and then us going back. And like they kind of just would like it was like a, a weird sense of like they love them but they don't love them you know it's just like right. they got love for them right 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 and so I think it's the same thing for for Isaiah too it's just like a love but they really don't love them like that no more so so when you broke into the league first year with the Westchester Knicks yep we see now Jalen Green coming out of high school going straight to the G League. What does it mean to you seeing how far the G League's come? And would that have been an avenue you would have considered coming out of high school and like skipping college, going straight to a G League type scenario? Uh, the way my game uh, kind of has progressed, um, I definitely couldn't have made that jump. But for, for the athlete and the player that Jalen Green is, I mean, I've, I've watched some highlights and, and I also um, – I worked out with the, the kid, uh, was it Todd? Um, I forgot his last name. He actually, he actually did the same thing Jalen Green did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Isaiah Todd. I think his name was Isaiah Todd. Yeah, yeah. he sounds right. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I actually worked out with him. And I mean, another freak athlete, uh, very versatile, can do a lot of, a lot of things. And the way that uh, you look at, like, the pricing of – Players come in now at five hundred thousand. I mean, at least for the young guys, like five hundred thousand, right. that's a lot of money. So right. that's going to be perfect for them. Like you know, I mean, even if they go overseas, they're not making that much money. And then right. on top of that, you're going to have a sneaky contract. So that's going to boost their kind of uh, morale up even more. So I mean, it's it's, it's really a win win for those guys. So kudos to them and, and making that that transition. So it's going it's going to definitely help the G League going forward because a lot more kids are going to be doing that, and it's going to be a pipeline for them. So when you were down there, did you ever even think that they were going to get this far? Or were you just like, I just want to get to the league. I'm not even worried about here. Man, to be honest with you, I, I didn't see that at all. At the time when I was playing, which was six years ago, I mean, we were still sleeping in motels. Like, it was just bad. Like, we, I mean, we, we played in – I mean, the, city, the cities we played in were great. I, I enjoyed every single city. But it's just we were playing – we were staying in motels, eating at IHOP, like – just trying to make it, just trying to make it. And that's, that's what the G League was back then. It was just trying to make it to either get out the situation or just make it through the season to see what's next. And uh, and now it's like a, a kind of launching board for so many kids now. Tell, I know you bringing up motels and, and whatnot makes me think you've got a, a real nightmare story from your time in the G League. What is it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I got a, I got a nightmare. We were uh, we were actually in Fort Wayne, and uh, we're staying at one hotel. I forgot the name of it, but uh, I'm I'm like thinking, all right, cool, you know, college. You stay in Marriott, so it can't be that bad. We uh, they give us keys at the front front desk. I'm like, all right, keys. Like, what does this even mean? Go to go to the rooms, open the door. We walk in it like it's all red. It looks like a horror scene. Like it just. <laughs> I thought I saw a roach go by. I'm just like over there, like shaking. You probably did. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And uh and I called my mom and dad and my my, uh, my girl at the time and I was like, man, look, I don't I know. Quit. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna do this, man. And they was like, nope, like this this is it. They're like this is this is a great, you know, point to like kind of decide if you want to go forward or you want to go home. And 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 I, you know, I kept pushing and got through that. And now uh, and hey, look, now I'm six years in as, as an NBA pro. Do you look back now like, man, oh, man, like you tell the younger guys, like in my day, we had to walk 15 miles uphill to the G League games. They didn't feed us. We didn't get food at all. And now you guys getting shoe contracts. Hey, you got to shake your finger like Christian Wood, Siku, some of the young guys. Yeah. Hey, look, look, I, uh, I was telling the young guys, they were like complaining about like working out like two or three times a day. And I was like, bro, like we was like getting like killed. Like they were working us out three, four, five times a day. Right. I'm trying to get us right. Like we was in the gym all day. Like there was no stoppage. Like we was in the gym in the morning before practice, back in the gym, then practice would happen. Then we would finish up practice, shoot some more, then come back late night. So it was just like constantly just being in there. So uh, eventually, you know, somebody was going to make it. Somebody was going to get an opportunity. And, and uh, I, I was blessed to, and fortunate to be, be me. Bruce Brown's like, I'm tired. Is anybody else tired? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man. So you've seen a decent bit of the NBA uh, in your, in your career thus far. Now that you've traveled, what's wrong with the Knicks? Like well, what's broken with them in the back end? Now that you've seen other competent franchises. Yeah, it's it's uh it's tough to say because um, there's so much um, turnover. I, I'm gonna say turnover in, in the Knicks organization right now that uh, there hasn't been like a dedicated coach for the last five six years. Right. Uh, so I think that's that's what the biggest issue is, is. Is like no stability. Yeah, it's like no stability. Like they're firing coaches left and right, and they change coaches, and they fire another coach, and they get. Rid- so it's like if they have stability, I feel like it would it would help out. I mean, and then you hear one voice instead of hearing five, six different voices. So when you guys get Dwayne Casey in Detroit, fresh off of winning Coach of the Year, were you confused? Like, why did this guy even hit the market? And like, was he ever just like, well, what the the fuck? Why am I? Why didn't I get that? Like, we got. I'm sure you were thrilled. Yeah, no, I was thrilled. I was thrilled. Um, and I mean, playing for uh, Stan Van Gundy. It was amazing uh, getting an opportunity to play for him, and you know he's a brilliant mind. Um, but you know, getting the coach of the year like that—that's in itself like a big, big accomplishment because you know, like he's kind of been around guys that have been the posi- been in positions that I want to be in. So I was like, man, look, this guy can help me get to get my career where I wanted to be at, and he can help me kind of continue to grow. And uh, and that's what he's done over the last two years. It really helped my game grow and. Uh, really giving me an opportunity to to showcase. Now, are you a ve- Are you still a vegan? Yeah, still vegan. I've been uh, vegan now nine months now. Nine months. Okay, because I, I was interested in how long you've been doing it. I feel like I hear it every once in a while with football players, but when you're talking about like the practicing three, four, five times a day, have you had that in the vegan days or not? Not so much yet. No, no, yeah, I've, I've had it. I've, uh, okay. I've the biggest thing. I tell a lot of people is that when you're working out so much, you eat so much more, uh, especially being vegan because portion sizes, not saying that they're small, but right. there's not as much to fill you up. It's not like a chicken breast or like uh, some shrimp or something like that. It like sit on your stomach and it's hearty. But vegan wise, you're, you're putting like mushrooms and white beans and red beans and just different type of uh, like energy um, solutions to kind of fix all the protein that you're missing. So, I mean, I, I've been thrilled with it, and um, I, I've, I've enjoyed being vegan. So, I mean, I, I, I give, um, you know, a lot of props to my career, kind of um, continue to spiral upwards um, with, with, with going vegan. Let's start, what, like, what, yeah, what, nine months ago, what got you into it? So, we we was, um we were, like, talking about it in preseason, just, like, just one to see what we can kind of do going forward to help my body, because... I had found out my cholesterol had went way up. So I was like, well, same. What's what's something that I can do that I can maintain for the rest of my life and then kind of help me continue to like, you know, going go on the right trend. And first we kind of talked about vegan, then the like the doctors and everybody was like, nah, we're gonna write that off. What about like some other options of you cutting out like salmon and um because I was just, I was basically just pescatarian before this. So okay. I, oh, I didn't just t- change all the way overnight. Yeah, I thought you were cold turkey. No, no, no. I was like, I was like, kind of like pescatarian before I started being vegan, and um, and then I was like, they would ask me, I was like, I don't know what it could be. So I was like, look, forget it. I'm gonna just cut everything. And I was like, I need y'all help to like help me through this process. Like, give me vitamins, give me uh some some iron deficiency like uh tablets to kind of pick all that up. So that way, when I get my next test, everything is back and and thriving. Um, and so when I got my next test, like my next blood test, everything was off the charts. Like it was all amazing. I felt great, and uh, and my weight was kind of staying the same. So it's it's been like that ever since. And uh, I, I mean, like I said, I just take it every day as, as, as a new step to kind of continue to learn even more about being vegan because it's 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 always evolving, always changing. So it's good. What do you miss the most? Shoot, I mean. Being from the South, I mean, uh, you know, they got etouffee, they got catfish. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You from Louisiana, too? Oh, oh man. man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's bad because, like, when I when I get a chance to go home, my family, they, they eat it right in front of me. They don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's your yeah. fault. 
That's your I don't have to guard LeBron James. Like, <laughs> right. uh, yeah. I don't know. It's like, I'm, a, I'm about to pig out, and y'all are going to stay over there. You can stay over there and eat your corn and potatoes, and that's it. <laughs> it's rude, but I get it. I understand. Yeah. Who Who is – uh, who's the most fun you have guarding in the league? Obviously, I can't imagine guarding LeBron's much fun at all. Uh, but yeah, yeah, who is yeah. someone you see and you're just like, let me light his ass up real quick? I, I wouldn't say uh, light anybody's ass up, but I, I would say uh, like just get an opportunity to compete against him, like Kyrie, like yeah. fun matchup because like I love competing on the defensive side, but also too, like Coach Casey like ran a lot of stuff for me, so like when I got my opportunities. I just was rolling. Like, I would come down, he'd have a pin down for me or uh, put the ball in my hands, get a pick and roll or whatnot. And so, you know, I'm doing everything on the offensive end, but then on the defensive end, I got to come down, guard the best player on the other team. So I love, like, the matches like uh, Kyrie, Curry, um, Russ, another one. Like, Russ always trying to get me in foul trouble when we play against each other. But, like, you know, just being physical and, and just just frustrating them, that's, that's what I'm always doing. So – I just I just love the matchups with with those guys. It's always fun. What's even the strategy against someone like Russ who plays every game at like a thousand miles an hour? Like you're basically playing football. Yeah, you really you really got to like frustrate them with um, like making them shoot threes, but also too like backing off, giving them um, space sometimes. So like uh, be into them, right. but not too much space, right? Because he'll he'll come down, back you down, try to pull up right in front of your face. So being able to have that, that give and take and be able to mix it up, um, that's, that's, that's what's key. No, go ahead. I was going to say, what, what was the moment since you did go through the G League, bounce around a little bit, but what was the moment that hit you? You were like, I made it. What was that moment? Um, Man. Uh, I mean, I, I probably would say like, my my ten day contract, the first one, like getting opportunity, like get a tip slam in the garden, like against the Rockets, like James Harden and them. Like I felt like I, I was like not not saying necessarily a coming out party, but just opportunity to just like showcase that hey, look, I'm, I'm here and I'm right. excited. I and, deserve to be here. Uh, yeah, and it's like I, I'm 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 never going back. So uh, getting an opportunity to play against them, the first that was my second game. And then, uh, like, two games later, I'm starting the rest of the season. So, I mean, not saying I knew I was going to start the rest of the season, but – You knew. Like, <laughs> Sometimes you do. No. Yeah, just, just, <laughs> just a change up with, with, with Coach uh, Fisher, just, just figuring out what we wanted to do. So, that was, that was pretty cool to see. I forgot Derek Fisher was the coach of the Knicks for a second. Yeah, yeah he was. That's my guy, too, man. That's my guy, yeah. Now, I saw uh, you did a Reddit Ask Me Anything. You said Dwayne Wade was the first player to do you dirty. But you didn't elaborate. <laughs> Elaborate. Yeah, well, uh, take your time. What 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 happened? Nah, he uh he hit me with a with a with a mean uh pullback, snatchback, I guess you could say. Uh in the garden we're playing against them uh when he was in Miami. I don't know that, I don't know what year that was. No, no my second second year, second year with the with the Knicks. Hmm. Hit me with a snatchback and uh yeah, he he, he got me. He got me. Did you, Did you get a bet? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I bust my ass. He bust my ass. Oh, boy. Now, listen, that's not that bad. Did you ever fall for one of his bullshit pump fakes from three? Because that's way worse to me. Much worse. Nah, nah. I never fell for that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're, fine, still, you're, you're on the level. You're still good. <laughs> People who jump at that and bead slow one, I'll never understand. I get in the heat of the moment. You're like, I might shoot. Let him shoot it. He shoots like 12% from three. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, you've been doing some gaming uh, during quarantine, right? Yeah, big big time, big time. What are you, yeah, what are you playing, man? I, I saw my my uh, brother in law just got me on Call of Duty. Like I I just I, I couldn't get into it, and then all of a sudden like he started like, yo, just try, just try, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna give in. And started playing, and I like got hooked on it. Like all right, let me start rolling with this thing. So I've been on Call of Duty. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've been on MLB the Show. I've been okay. playing the show. Road those, to those the show. Are, yeah, road to the show. Yep. Yep. Okay. Doing road to the show. Yep, and then uh, my boys they got a man league right now, so uh, I got I got to get back in there. Like I I took a year, well, it took two years off. Well, not two years, like in our years, but two yeah. years in the seasons. Mm. It was like, hey, look, when y'all get to this point, I'm gonna come back in. So once the season ends, I'll be back in the league. So no two K, you don't like to? Do you play two K? I mean, I, I play every now and then. Like my boys, they always want me to get in there, but 
I just don't have no time, man. It, it just, it's just too much time for me to kind of build up my player and whatnot. So I'm just like, man, I forget it right now. I'm just, you know, sticking with Call of Duty, uh, MLB, and then, uh, and then Madden. Mm. What, what difficulty do you play on MLB? Man, for real, I, I'm, I'm on rookie right now. I'm on rookie. Smart, yes. smart man. Hey, look, I'm telling you, man, when you playing on the highest difficulty, all star and all that, it's ooh, not fun. There's nobody. They, they having they're they not even throwing like strikes no more. They're throwing all curveballs <laughs> in like outside the zone or they're throwing stuff. Like, I'm like, dog, I can't play like this, man. <laughs> it's a debate we've been having online. Uh, anybody, like that. anybody that plays road to the show, it's like there's no in between. You play no. on rookie or hall of fame. Nobody plays on like pretty good. Nobody yeah. plays on that. No, no, no. But I, I'm team rookie. I, I, I think you're on the right side of history here. Yeah, look, look, because my dude, he balling out there, hitting home runs left and right. <laughs> I'm like, hey, look, I love this. As soon as I went up, like went like I was doing uh, uh like uh, dynamic. Dynamic, yeah. yeah nope. I was doing dynamic, and it started changing up on me real fast. Like it went from like, all right, we're gonna throw you a, a, a fastball like in the dirt. Next thing you know, they're throwing sliders like it's about to hit me, and I can't hit the. I'm like, <laughs> What uh, what position and what teams your guy on? Uh, so I got one guy. He's on. Um, he actually just got called up from um, from um, Double A. Um, uh, he's on the uh, Tigers now. He's on the Tigers now. And then my other guy, I just started him. He's uh, he's with the Cubs organization. He's in Double A in the Cubs. He's about, he about to start his first game. I I kind of like. I got to got my guy in the MLB, and I just wanted to see how that was, see how fast it would turn over. So now I'm gonna go back, start a guy, and then like stream it so that way the fans can see me like kind of progressing with that. So just that's- mash some dingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they can say, oh yeah, this guy's all right. He's actually good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Have you played in cores yet against the Rockies? No, no, I haven't. I haven't played it. No. Nah. Re- before you even start, if you can request a trade to cores, the cores is. You're going to be hitting like 480, 500, 520 feet. Oh, because like, the ball travels. The ball travels. Like, yeah, they put that into the game. So yeah, if yeah. you haven't started and if you're not like married to the Cubs organization, try to get to the Rockies. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I respect you coming on here and saying you play on rookie. A lot of people are trying right. to act tough, <laughs> be like Hall of Fame. No, no. The, it's nah. the way to go. You're going to, the history books are going to remember you fondly for that decision. <laughs> Yeah, nah, like I said, I'm trying to hit some home runs. I ain't trying to be out here, I'm trying to be the next King Griffey out here. Yeah, Got one for four. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. that's not fun. I'm not having not fun. fun. <laughs> what is it just the video game, or did you grow up a baseball fan? Uh, no, nah, I just, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit of both. Uh, uh, like in the South, like baseball's huge, it's huge, but like it's not enough time for baseball if you're playing like AAU and whatnot. No, so, man. uh, I kind of started playing AU when I was like, what, 11, 12? Well, I'll probably say that like 10, 11, 10, 10, 11. And, um, and then I just like kind of shut it down. was like, look, I'm, I'm going to stop all the other sports. Because I was playing football. I, I played football all the way up in the high school. Uh, I, played, I still ran track in high school um, and then basketball. But then once all that kind of uh, kind of fell off just by the wayside, I kind of just kept going. Mm. I was going to say, in the South, I'm surprised they even allowed you to stop playing football. Yeah, and nah, like I said, football is huge. It's huge. He's like, no, no, I'm, he's like, I'm really good at basketball. You guys got to <laughs> trust me. <at> this. <laughs> my, my my coach, he kind of forces like he like he was a stickler about like if any of like our teammates, like my teammates played football, he would call us soft and this and that. And like at the time, like as a kid, you're like, man, look, I ain't trying to <laughs> call soft out here, man. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to take care of my, you know, my 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 own little realm of friends and make sure nobody called me and nothing like that. So I'm stuck to it. One last question I like to ask players and uh that will get you out of here. Who is the best dressed player on the Pistons? It could be yourself. I, so so this is what I'm gonna say. So this is a long, long ended question, right? Okay. So they they took me out the category. So we actually had this debate in the locker room before the last hiatus game or whatnot. <laughs> okay. So uh, you guys caused this. This yeah, argument. Kind of. <laughs> they, they did play the Jazz. Yeah, we, yeah, we played the Jazz, played, played the uh, Sixes, all of them, and then they shut it down. Uh, so basically, they said I'm the most versatile on the team, right? Okay. So I, I wear suits. I wear 
uh, sweatshirts I wear, you know, you name it, like the, the new brand stuff, I wear that too. Okay. So they said I'm the most versatile. But then they were debating that since I'm, I'm the most versatile, I can't be in the category of like best dress on the team. I'm just up, I'm in a different category from everybody else. So I was like, I don't even make sense. I don't make sense. No. But I was like, I guess so, because nobody else on my team wears suits. Everybody else is just like, you know, they're going to dress up with the, the Gucci's and the Louis Vuitton and whatnot. Right. Uh, so but, you don't have any competition is what I hear. That, that's what it sounds like, right? That's what it sounds like. <laughs> but uh, but now I'm, I'm going to give it to like my, my young boy, uh, Sekou, uh, uh, Bruce okay. Brown, one of them two. They they both they both have like crazy style and then they uh they 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 make sure they uh they bring it every single game. Okay. And who's the worst dress? Who's the one guy who who just can't get it right? Somebody immediately uh, came to mind. Right to mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony Snell, man. Tony oh, Snell. Oh no, not not Tony. Oh, what do you wear? Like what did guys give him a hard oh, time? This guy forgot my shirt again today. I'm yeah, sorry, uh, fellas. Well, <laughs> Overalls, he's now man. So, uh, he wears uh, he still wear baggy clothes, like, still wear like I kind of respect that from LA, right? Yeah, he, yeah, LA, LA, yeah, he still wear baggy clothes. I I can't, I can't get on the detail, but yeah, baggy clothes. So, you can kind of picture it in your mind of of an LA guy. Uh, That's unfortunate. Um, (laughs) we may have to talk to Tony, see if we can get him some help. (laughs) <laughs> uh, no, I like it. He's like, it's still 2004 in Tony Snell's world. I don't give a fuck what the rest like, of you guys are cooking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Y'all like this FUBU? Y'all see these uh, <laughs> jeans? Yeah. 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 Uh, all right, Langston, we really appreciate your time here. Uh, hopefully you can get back to some basketball soon, but I look forward to your career as a professional trainer after being a bas- uh, slash basketball broadcast. player. Yeah, slash broadcast. Right. I'm in mean, everything. and Switch in everything. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, stay safe. Best of, uh, best of luck with the rest of quarantine. And thanks for joining us again. Yeah, no, thank you guys for having me on. I'll be safe, yeah, man. Of course. All right, thanks, man. man.